we have a quorum. And so I call this a meeting of the Monroe County Board of Zoning Appeals to order. This is August 31st, 2022. And uh, Ms. Nestor Jellen, would you please call the roll? Sure. Margaret Clemens. Here. Skip Daly. Pamela Davidson. Here. Guy Laughlin. Here. D. Owens. There's a message in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. I think she might be uh, coming online soon. And Skip will be here soon. But we do have three in person members, which is a quorum to get started if you would like. Okay. So um, D needs to be elevated to panelist. Okay. Is, is she elevated to panelist yet? At least. Yes. Okay. okay so. Uh, well, my sound was off. <laughs> And so you're present. I am present. Roll call. Yep. Is there a motion to introduce the evidence? I move we introduce the evidence. Second. I second that. Okay, it's been motioned and seconded. I will introduce the evidence. The Monroe County Comprehensive Land Use Plan as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Zoning Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Subdivision Control Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Board of Zoning Appeals Rules of Procedure is adopted and amended. The case is advertised and scheduled for hearing on tonight's agenda. Um, so uh, do you move to approve? Move to approve. I, I second that. Second, okay, it's been moved and seconded. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Guy Laughlin? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Okay, motion passes four to zero. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Oh, I move to approve the agenda. <laughs> I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as shown. Guy Laughlin? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Okay, so now we can get on to the heart of the meeting. There's no administrative business. There are no minutes to approve. And so the first three items on the agenda are VAR-22-20A, B, and C, and that's the wisely minimum lot size variance to Chapter 804, the wisely uh, buildable area variance to chapter 804 and the wisely eco area three variance to chapter 825 concerning a 2.25 acre parcel in Salt Creek Township at section 20 at 4504 South State Road 446. And I believe that Mr. Brown will be reviewing the, these three variances with us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Just a brief recap uh, as, this was, as it's been a month almost since we reviewed this last. last. Uh, this variance request was triggered by a residential building permit, R-22-611, for the construction of a new single family home, an extension of a driveway, and a replacement of an old septic system. The building permit is for a two-story house with an area of 1,350 square feet, an attached garage measuring 570 square feet, a deck at 200 square feet, and a basement at 780 square feet. This will replace a, an existing mobile home on the property. A search through various deeds to the property show a reduction in acreage with the recent survey. What was previously recorded as 2.75 acres, more or less, is now 2.25 acres, more or less, after a survey done in 2021. Since we must go by the survey acreage and not the prior legal acreage, a minimum lot size was needed. And here we can see the site. It is within the Eco3 area as the map on the right shows. It was also in the Eco2 area, but there has been a modification to the site plan since the last meeting. This shows the site itself with the current existing mobile home, as well as the slopage. I'm sorry, slopage is not a word. <laughs> it's a good one. I like it. As well as the slope on the property. I, again, don't think my camera skills are up to snuff, but I think that potentially shows the sharp decline of the property towards the eastern side. 
And here are these site plans shown side by side. The new one is on the, on the right and the old one is on the left. As you can see, the proposed home has been moved out of the Eco2 area. Hence, the Eco2 variance has been dropped from the agenda and dropped from this project. There is still, however, a portion of the proposed house that is within the that is within both an area of 15% or more slope, as well as the Eco3 area, as shown by the green line that shows 18% slope on the property. So with this revision, staff recommends approval of all three variances, the minimum lot size variance, the buildable area variance, and the environmental constraints overlay three variants with the condition that the petitioner must apply for a residential demolition permit concurrent to the residential building permit for the removal of the, of the current mobile home. Thank you. Does, do members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have questions for staff? And let the record reflect that Skip Daly has arrived and is present. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. No questions. I, um, I have one question. What caused and instigated the reduction in acreage on this property? Because And how pervasive is that throughout the county? We... I somewhat hypothesized that in myself. Uh, I think our best guess is that the survey, the prior survey was done incorrectly. As far as we can tell, that 2.75 acreage stretches back several decades. We think that maybe due to, I think it's been suggested that maybe because of the severe slope on the property, it was eyeballed. The acreage was eyeballed instead of accurately measured. I see. I see. Well, thank you for that explanation. I've noticed some reduction in my own acreage. So I was curious how that happened. So um, with that being said, I would like to welcome the uh, petitioner, or the petitioner's representative, Mr. Deckard, if you would please sign in and, um, well, you know the drill. We'll swear you in after that. It's good to see you. Good seeing you guys. Thank you. And would you please raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Yep. So uh, just kind of wanted to reiterate what- Name uh, please. Eric Deckard. Thank of you. Deckard Land Surveying. Yes. So just wanted to kind of reiterate what, what Daniel had to say. Since the last meeting that we had, you know, the septic field was, was the issue in the room, so to speak. And we really wanted to move this septic field closer to the highway. Um, we've had additional sold tests conducted since the last time and got Ryan's approval to move that septic field closer to state road 446 and then move the house approximately 85% out of that 18 and 15% slope lines and also getting it out of the eco too. So that's only going to leave us with approximately 60 feet of structure that's going to be in the 15 to 18%, but you still have a patio. So in grand total, what would infringe onto the 15 to 18% is 400 square feet. That's great. Do uh, members of the board have questions for Mr. Decker? I do not. Okay. I do not. Okay. And, okay so no. Oh, yes, online. Yes, are there member? Oh, uh, Dee, do you have a question? No, I do not. Thank you. And so uh, we will move now to members of the public who are attending in person who are in favor of this uh, petition for three variances. If there are none, I'd also like to open it up to members of the public who are attending by Zoom or by telephone. If you would like to be recognized to speak in favor of this petition, please raise your virtual hand or press star nine on your telephone to be recognized. There's none. Are there members of the public who are present who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? If you're here in the uh, Nat Hill courtroom, come to the podium. If you're online uh, attending by Zoom, please raise your virtual hand. Or if you're attending by telephone, press star nine and we'll hear from you. 
with that being said, and we see no um, people in support, no members of the public who'd like to weigh in on this issue, is there a motion or further discussion by our board? Well, I'm pleased to see everything worked out that makes this a, a, uh, a project that's consistent with, with the environmental needs. And, and you, you know, you're stuck with a erroneous property description. You, you can't do much about that and we should certainly accommodate that. So I move to approve uh, the uh, variances uh, 22, uh, dash 20A, dash 20B, and 20C. I second. Okay, would you please call the roll? Is that with or without we, the condition? Oh, yes. With, we with need to add those. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. With the conditions as specified by the, by the plan department. Okay. Let's just, can we just clear the motion? Can we I'll read it. Yeah, so the motion was to approve VAR-22-20A, 20A, 20B, and 20C. That's for minimum lot size, buildable area, and eco area three, with the condition that the petitioner must apply for a residential demolition permit concurrent to the residential building permit, the removal of the current mobile home. I'll call the roll, Margaret Clements. Yes. Skip Daly. Yes. Guy Laughlin. Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Yes. Pamela? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Deckard. Thank you. Thank you for working on that. I concur with Guy. Yeah. Thanks. And just a reminder to the board and to anyone that speaks at the podium, it can be very difficult to hear from the back. So if anyone from the public wants to move up to the front, there are seats here, but we'll also make an effort to speak loudly into the mic. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. So the next item on the agenda is item number four, VAR-22-27, the Lauk's front yard setback variance to chapter 804 concerning 119.21 acre parcel in Polk Township at 7845 East Chandler Road. And so um, I believe Ms. Cresselius will guide us through this. Yes, thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Okay, so the petitioner is requesting a variance from the front setback requirement of 25 feet from Chapter 804. They've applied for a residential accessory structure for a stick-built carport that is 30 by 40. The property currently contains a single family dwelling. The location that the petitioner is proposing is a current gravel parking area. So they're proposing that the structure is located to be 15 feet from the property boundary. The front setback is 25 feet. That's what's required by chapter 804. So that's an encroachment of 10 feet. If the variance is approved, the, the petitioner will continue with an IOP application to permit the structure with the 10 foot encroachment into the front setback only for this carport structure. If the variance is denied, the petitioner will be required to meet the 25 foot setback. So on the screen is a aerial image. Uh, just please note that the thicker blue line is really a better approximation of the actual property boundary. On elevated GIS, it does appear off. So the red box is the approximate location of the carport. So the property does have slopes on it. Um, uh, but the area that they are proposing it is is a buildable area and there is buildable areas surrounding. Um, so staff does recommend denial of this front setback variance from chapter 804 for an encroachment of 10 feet. Um, and the reasoning is, is that the structure could be relocated 10 feet farther to the north and meet the setback requirement and would still be located within buildable area. Okay. Uh, are there questions of the staff by the board? No. Well, then, uh, pardon me. Uh, can you guys hear me? Um, um, we're waiting here from, we haven't opened it up to the public yet. Oh, I'm, I'm John Lauchs, in case it matters. I, I thought I would have a chance to say something, but that's fine. No, yes, you do, sir. And I didn't know that was you. So if you would please, in your home, raise your right hand. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? 
Yes, I do. And please state your name and you have 15 minutes to go over this uh, request for a variance with us. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so my name is John Laux and I got, got a little nervous there. Um, do you just need to explain, do I just need to explain why I, I think it's a, that we need the variance? Yeah, why those 10 feet are so important for your project? And why you need that variance? And sure. sure. So um, I put in there, it's pro there's one detail, that, and it is possible, by the way, I agree that uh, it could be mo moved north. But if I move it north, there's like this domino effect. If I move it north, um, the power line goes right through the middle of the road. So it would. Where that looks like you could put a building, it would mean that I would uh, that we'd have to get the power company to come in and remove and replumb the power lines. And from what I understand it, they don't remove old power lines, just create new ones. So they would have to dig up my neighbor's yard and our yard to be able to put the power line through that ten that area that has a ten foot north. So it. We're really kind of boxed in there. Um, uh, the only other option we have, which is which is possible, which is we can start cutting down trees um, towards the lake. But we that's why we were and that's why we we were that's why we thought that we would ask for the variance because it seemed less destructive and uh, to the to the neighbor and um, to the woods. So um, maybe that's not a great argument, but there is a power line right where it looks like you could put the parking garage, but we, we can't do that without, um, they can move it. Um, so I'm not saying they can't move it, but it's it, that, that is the impediment that I'm trying to avoid. So uh, you're basically claiming, if I hear you correctly, that um, by adhering to the Stand, current standards um, and by moving that parking structure that it would interfere with utility facilities and uh, other transportation and yeah. other property owners in your surrounding neighborhood. Is that what you're that's, saying? That's, that's my understanding is that to move that, it would require moving the power line and moving the power transformer or whatever that box is, the big green box. They'd have to move the box because it would be too close and they'd have to use the power line. And then uh, from what I understand on the estimate is they would have to dig up, not just our yard, which is fine, but they would have to dig up our neighbor's yard to whatever the closest, I don't know the term, but whatever the closest power hookup is. And so it would go through their yard. They dig a new line. They don't take out the old cable, the power line and put in, put one down over on top of it, as my understanding. They, they kind of dig a new one. Oh, may I ask, <clears throat> Mr. Lux, how do you know that? Where did you get that information from? From the power company or from the from the power company? We had them we had them come out and they get. I don't have them on the thing, but they came out and gave us estimates and options, and they tried to explain, you know, the distance between distance the structure has to be from the power and where the current power lines are. And we had them all marked the, we had them all, everything come out to mark the power and the water. And we we're just trying to assess at the end of the day, you know, with the grade limitations and the power where the power is. Um, uh, and on the other side, which looks, well, it is in there, but then we have the, the lead field. So at the end of the day, almost all the land that is, that we can put something on, uh, is taken up. And so that's why we kind of were like, if we, it, you know, it's not the end of the world. It just, it seemed like the least of the least intrusive to the woods and to what we wanted to do without having to tear up. <clears throat> I say tear up, they dig a trench. <laughs> I'm not trying to make it sound worse, but they will have to dig a trench to, uh, to through the neighbor's, uh, yard. And may I ask another question? Yes. Traffic does that road, uh, right there in front of this area get, uh, almost none. 
um, I'm at the end of the road. My neighbor is, uh, he, those are, uh, basically the recreational hunting cabins. He doesn't live there. And the, uh, on the other side of it is the, uh, forest state for or federal, federal forest. Um, and there's one person that does live out, uh, Larry Rinker that has a cabin out that way. There's a road that he can get to. So that he occasionally comes through and it's, but it's all chained up. It's no, no traffic can go through to that direction. Okay, are there other questions for, oh yes, uh, Mr. Daly has a question for you, Mr. Lokes. Thank you. Mr. Lokes, my question is, is this the first time that the planning staff is hearing this information about the potential need to dig up the power lines or is this a discussion that you've had with them earlier? So <clears throat> this is my first petition and we filled out the f description and I was looking at it because I, I saw the die and I was like, oh, um, it, it does. I, we should have elaborated. We didn't know how to put it in there, but it does say due to ex uh, existing trees under, underground, existing trees in underground electrical lines, I am requesting a variance of 15 feet. We didn't go. Uh, we did say additional costs is moving electrical near cleared area. So in the letter that we sent out yeah, to, to Monroe County Planning Commission, um, it was stated in the sense, but I didn't elaborate on the digging up of the um, trench, just okay, of you. the moving the electrical and cost. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it, 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 is the current power line above ground? No, it's not. It's, um, uh, it's, whatever i should remember what they told me but it's uh i don't know it's something like several feet or six feet or below below ground it goes from um uh, maybe 100 yards from my neighbor's house to the green box and then from the green box to the house so it's um they told me it was very deep and they marked the, uh, well you don't need to know they marked it there but um we, I'm pretty sure I, I, I don't want to misrepresent. I, I, I thought it was like four to six feet. We hand dug the grass off the top of it because we were worried that when we put just when we made the gravel road, we were worried that we would, you know, hit it. But they told us there's no way we could hit it with a shovel. Um, but I guess unless you dug deep. But anyhow, did, did I answer your question? I'm a little nervous. Uh, so, uh, and you don't have a, a, none of these drawings show the location. Is that right? Of the, uh, that, of the that is, that is correct. I was trying to, I was looking at it briefly, trying to see if I can explain where it is given any of the diagrams, but, um, it looks, it's a probably, <sighs> I'm just going to estimate like 15 yards north of it comes diagonally across and, and across underneath our, that the road, that's the driveway that we put in. And they said that was fine. Um, but as far as an exact location, no, I'm sorry. I could update that, but it, it would, <clears throat> given that it has to be, um, well, they they could move the if they move the box. I'm not sure. Let's see. I don't even think we'd ask them if they moved it. If we moved it north, because I think then that would be um, yeah. If we if we didn't move the power line and we tried to do it, move it north, it would be like a, a, given it has to be far enough away from, from, I think it would be like, cause the, the, the building can't be oh, the driveway. Sorry. The driveway can be over the power line. The building cannot. And so the building, the space left is like a 10 feet or no 20. Maybe the building would be like 
20 by 10 or something. No, some, I haven't done the math, but it would, the, the amount of space was pretty small if we moved it north of the power line. Let me ask one more question. Yeah. Has the power company given you anything in writing about any of this or is it all just talk? Uh, no, I don't have it with me right now. My wife will be home soon, but uh, we have an, two estimates for two ways that they could move the power line if if <clears throat> if we wanted to move the uh, the power line. And, and would you have to pay for the moving? Yes. It was it was in the thousands, three three to five, I think, depending upon what they did. Three to five thousands. I mean. Okay. Um, I would like then to open this up to the public. Are there members of the public here who would like to speak in favor of this petition? If you're here in the Nat Hill courtroom, please come to the podium. If you're attending via Zoom, please raise your virtual hand. Or if you are calling in, press star nine. No. All right. Okay. Are there members of the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? If so, please come to the podium, raise your virtual hand, or press star nine on your telephone. And if there's none, I'd like to bring it back to the Board of Zoning Appeals. And for further discussion, yes, Mr. Daly. I have a quick question for staff. Uh, were you aware of this described uh, challenge that the petitioner has with the power company prior to your recommendation of denial. And if you were not, how would that potentially influence you at this point? Uh, we were aware in the sense that they included it on their letter. Um, we did have a site plan edit at one point to include like septic system. We did get that back. Um, it wasn't necessarily asked of them to identify that power line. It certainly would have been helpful. Um, all of that information probably would have been very helpful beforehand. It would have. Um, would you have, assuming this is the actual case and that the way he described it is the way that the utility company would also describe it, would that change your recommendation in any way or would you have another potential workaround for the situation in mind? I mean, I guess my question coming out of hearing that testimony is really what is that location of the power line? I think at one point I heard possibly 15 yards away, but also maybe running diagonal. I mean, that could, I mean, it, not being able to put a structure over it, that's understandable, but it sounds like there may be room. Thank you. This is a little bad. Would it be helpful if you had at this point, if you had information from the power company to be able to work this out somehow? I think the, the, the board could has the information to make a motion. I mean, I think staff could support it if we had identified that line beforehand. Okay. Would, okay, would uh, just, would a potential tabling of this for the petitioner to obtain the detailed information and to pass it along with you and to give you time to review that, would that be helpful for you or for the petitioner? I mean, if we continue this and we got more information, we could come back with a, a recommended motion of, of support. Okay. But I'd like to just say something here. Um, and um, it, uh, Mr. Logs did say that this was his first uh, petition with the Board of Zoning Appeals and that he seems to have done some due diligence. He's got gone to the extent of got, getting and obtaining a couple of quotes. He's spoken with his neighbors. Uh, there is a utility line involved and I think practical difficulties exist and that there could be um, more disruption to the value of other neighbors' properties and more, I think this is, might be the most parsimonious and most elegant solution if he works with staff and make it a condition that he works with staff with that utility uh, location and that uh, maybe perhaps I would think in this case, uh, it, it's my opinion a variance would uh, help him get it done before the weather turns, you know? 
So um, that's how I feel about it. I don't know. I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but uh, that's how I feel. Well, I'm. I wish I had the information from the power company and the drawings. I mean, my impression is that the power company probably has all sorts of things that show these property lines and exactly where their easement is and that that could be overlaid reasonably easily so that we would, uh, would have the information. And I'd like to see the estimates that the, the power company provided. If all of that lines up, and it's not that I doubt Mr. Laux, I think one of my responsibilities is to do due diligence to, to protect the public. Uh, I'm far from unalterably opposed to this, uh, but I do feel I need more information to be comfortable. And it's, it's just August. <laughs> okay, it's August 31st. Yes. But uh and my experience with with pole buildings is they they get those posts in the ground pretty quick. Um so I I don't think weather closing in. Uh so uh, Mr. Laux uh if if we put this off for a month. Are you willing to try to get more information to the planning uh, staff and us so we can be fully informed about this? Mr. Laux, does he need to be unmuted again? Sorry, everybody likes to mute me. Sorry, it's all good. Um, yeah, I, I I missed. This is the second month. I, th it's on my fault. I didn't even know last time I had to petition. So um, I guess show, me showing up and getting online is a good step forward. Um, I'm perfectly happy with giving more information on a personal level. Um, the uh, Graber, I think it's eight weeks out, and they won't. They say they won't even put me on the schedule if I have to get a variance. So that, that I'm only pushing back in the sense that um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, if I don't have, you know, covered area for, for the, the, the boat and the, and the cars, but um, there is sort of a, a month. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a long month. Um, if, if it were something that, it, I don't know how this works, but if it was something like, I will, you know, promise to get all the information and, if, and, and we won't, we won't put a shovel to the ground or do anything, but it would be nice to be able to, to be able to, to start getting in queue with the builder, because otherwise we'll, we'll, we'll wait a month and then we, then we get to go into the queue. That's, and maybe that's just the builder, but he, he would, he, he doesn't want to. Um, commit to anything if there's a variance. And so um, to answer your question, if the, if, if the, if, if, if the only option is that um, I supply the information, which I, I can do certainly, cause I have it somewhere, make copies of the uh, um, power supply quotes and then try to draw a line and show you where the power line is um, and give measurements. I'd be happy to do that is the short answer. That wasn't sure it wasn't. Um, but it sure would be great if, if we could, if this was more of a, a just making, sh making sure it was okay before we did it. <laughs> I don't, uh, I, but I could go ahead and tell the builder that, you know, um, unless something terrible happens or something that, that it's, it's a, it's a go as opposed to, you know, um, having to wait even longer. So I don't know what that, I think, again, not life or death, but it, it, it's going to be like a month, whatever this, the, the variance is plus probably two months or three months, depending upon the queue. But yeah, sorry, I'll be quiet. Thank you, Mr. Lox. So it's still my, um, my desire to see this approved with conditions and then we, it would be efficient for us and efficient for him and efficient for the builders. But that's my- I will, I will make a motion to approve the variance upon uh, the variance 22-27 uh, with the condition that the petitioner 
uh, shows uh, planning department staff uh, adequate resources from the power company describing the hardship and works with planning department to have the least negative effect upon um, the, the environment right there. That's a long motion. It is. Can we also add that, that to see the two estimates that he's already procured? Yes. That'd be great. And have a utility locate I, service. I can't, can't wait to hear the staff repeat that one. <laughs> so, so it is, well, somebody want to second that? Is the staff comfortable saying, Sure, if he satisfies us, then we'll grant it. If he doesn't, we're going to say he didn't meet the conditions, and then it would come back to us at our next meeting. So if you are recommending approval or voting approval tonight, and there's no quotes from the electric company or anything like that, then we can't really... I don't, I, we might be able to take it back for lack of conditions. I, I, okay. I'm, I don't think we should, I am not going to vote in favor of passing it tonight because I feel like Mr. Laux has come with a lot of very important information and I can't support it until I've seen the information and evaluated it. I think I will be sympathetic if it all adds up, but I have to see it add up before I can vote in favor of it. Is, Mr. Laux, is there any way that you could email us that information and we could push you to the end of the agenda? I will work as fast as I can to go find it. Is that okay? I think that's great. I, I, I motion that we table this to the end of the meeting. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Yeah, I am. Um, yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, Mr. Favor. Lox, we'll be hearing from you soon. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to get on with the rest of the meeting. The next two items on the agenda have been continued by staff. The fifth item on the agenda is VAR-22-25, the Jason Deckard minimum lot width variance to Chapter 804 concerning one two-acre parcel in Bean Blossom Township um, at 7118 West Walker Lane. And um, I think this is going to be Tammy Behrman walking us through this. Yeah. This won't be an easy one for you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have a brief summary. We had a permit uh, applied for, residential permit R-22-608 for the property there on 7118 West Walker Lane. It's a two acre parcel. Um, they were proposing a 300 square foot garage addition. This is zoned Ag RR, and the design standards call for a 200 foot lot width. The width here is 165 feet. So they are here for the first part for a design standards variance for a minimum lot width. In order to issue that permit, we also need to demonstrate compliance with the rest of the ordinance, and we found a compliance issue. So back in 2013, the, there was a mobile home on the lot that was put there back in around 1966. And the petitioner wanted to put a brand new home on the, on the lot and had to come before the BZA for a minimum lot size variance. I am, and they were granted that. I'm not sure why the planner did not catch the width at that time, but that's what happened. So we're here doing that part. Um, but the mobile home at the time was allowed to stay uh, under permit 13-RM-016. And we're using a part of the ordinance that since I've been here in 10 years, we really have never used, um, but it was used quite a bit before my, eh, maybe three or four times before my time. Um, this allows the mobile home to remain on the site as a temporary um, placement for medical hardship. And at the time it looked like that they had satisfied 
the planner who reviewed this thought they said that they had provided enough evidence to allow this to stay there. That permit expired in October 16th of 2014. So for the last seven plus years, we've had two residences on one lot and one of those without a permit. This is the site conditions for the lot. Um, it's rather flat next to a water tower and a cemetery there to the east. And then I kind of zoomed out a bit and it may be difficult for you to see, but what I see is a lot of karst features. We have sinkholes to the south, to the southwest, and then some other larger ones to the north and northwest. And though this lot appears to be kind of draining towards the west and kind of northwest, it's hard to say in these karst topography areas because the underground conduits can go wherever. And this will kind of come into play when I discuss septic systems in a little bit. Um, so with regards to the lot width, we noticed that the parcel lines were really far off here and we had questions whether the side setback was being met, but we had found a plat to the south um, next just to the right of the yellow line and the Pinewood subdivision is a mention for this petitioner's lot. And we did some calculations and saw that there was maybe a 32 foot shift in the parcel layer up there. So we were able to justify that a a uh, side yard setback was not required, but we are still left with that minimum lot width to contend with. These are some site photos. Um, this is the driveway that runs along the Eastern property line. And in the shadows here is where the mobile home is. And back towards the back is where the newer home in 2013 was placed. Um, this is the mobile home. It's a 1966 mobile home. You'll see some uh, hoses and electric lines that are coming through the yard. Um, they do have an RV on site at the moment. I'll go into that in a moment. Uh, this is the mobile home here again. And then this is the 2013 home that they're planning to do the expansion for um, a, a garage. And the garage would go here. Uh, this is again a photo of the eastern side of the mobile home. And then this was, um, I may do a follow up visit to confirm that this was just a temporary RV placement. You're not allowed to live in an RV, but um, the petitioner stated that this was family that was visiting. I'm going to take them at their word, but I might still do a follow up just to confirm um, that we don't have a non compliance issue here. Um, and then again, where the addition is going to go, the mobile home back here, and the garage. So the petitioner, we worked with him to get a site plan that would meet our specifications. And this is what we ended up with. So here's the 2013 house with the yellow representing the proposed garage addition and the mobile home here. Um, there was a septic permit issued for the 2013 home. And the 20 or the 1966 mobile home, uh, we do not have a record of a septic permit. We reached out to the health department and a um, real estate inspection was performed. I'll go into that here momentarily. So in the packet, I do have the improvement location permit that allows the temporary medical hardship manufactured home to remain on site in two places. It does state that it expired in 2014. I will say that in 2014, right around 2013, we had ex an extensive staff turnover. So I'm not surprised that this maybe got lost in the shuffle, but it, you know, the, the petitioner should have come back and, and done this process properly. Um, it was for the purposes of allowing his grandmother to remain on site nearby. And I believe his mother was helping to take care of that individual. Um, the grandmother, I believe, has since passed away. And so it's, it's the mother that lives here now. And um, this temporary mobile home placement um, was supposed to have not remained in place um, with the changing of, of people living there. 
I did do a compliance review uh, against chapter 814-4 and went through each individual step to see if we were meeting compliance. Uh, the one thing I, I think that really kind of grabs me is that we don't have a septic system locate or uh, compliance in that uh, part A1. The second part, hit my notes so I can get that easier. This one. So the second one is to um, provide a licensed physician certification, and that was provided under Exhibit 7. With number three, we have to notify interested parties. That was done. I think I only had one person who called to inquire and they did not seem to have an issue. Um, they need to demonstrate compliance with all other land use and ILP requirements. Um, we don't have compliance with minimum lot size variance. So that's kind of pending at the moment, which is why I made it an orange color. Uh, fees for administrative review. Uh, we did see the fee paid for this um, administrative review process, but there will still need to be the $100 fee if it is approved. They will need to come back annually to the Board of Zoning Appeals, pay the, the fee for this, which is $400 currently, and then also pay for the permit fee for $100. Um, we have had one of these other temp mobile home placements that was converted into an accessory dwelling unit. It seemed to meet the criteria a little bit better. Um, and then we have part B, temporary improvement location permits and temporary land use certificates shall expire 12 months after the date of issuance. And so we did see that the one that was issued in 2013 expired. It's been there still seven years without any permits. Um, and they didn't, and, and from what I can tell from database searches that made no efforts to make an application until uh, we kind of found out during a different permit review process. And so um, let's continue on. Okay, the real estate inspection, uh, we had been in contact with the health department and agreed at the time that this would probably be the thing that would help us determine um, if they were meeting that one criteria A in a chapter 814-1. And on page 34 of the packet, uh, you'll see that I'll just highlight a few things that cause planning staff some concern, especially here in this karst area. Um, where is the septic system located? Unknown. When was the septic system installed? Unknown. When was the septic tank last pumped? Unknown. Was the septic permit issued? There is no record. Um, and as the recorded information, there's no recorded septic system. Um, they are unable to locate the septic tank. There's last known pumping is unknown. And the absorption system, they were unable to locate an absorption field. However, they do state that there are no signs of failure, um, but that could be for different reasons that maybe we don't know about with the geology in that area. And it could be that it's working just fine. Um, it's just, it's an old system and there's no records. Um, there were letters submitted by the petitioner, both one for the um, administrative re review process, stating that his um, mother must be in constant contact with family members, and also reiterating that there was no visible signs of failure for the septic. And then we have the letter from the healthcare professional. And then I did include on the last page of the staff report, um, staff, we're, we put in a lot of time in this one, uh, kind of trying to present some options here. Um, you know, one was just to remove it outright and not go through this process, and that's not easy. Um, the other one was to possibly see if they could convert this into an accessory dwelling unit. And then we have this one, which is to continue to try to obtain this temporary mobile home placement that they'll be here coming annually for if it's approved. Um, 
And so, you know, we tried to provide them with as much information as possible to make the decision and have them reach out to professionals when possible um, to assist. Uh, and so with that, with the variance petition, VAR-22-25, staff recommends approval of the minimum lot width variance request. Um, reasoning is that the property has been in this 168 foot wide configuration since at least 1969, and that's from the old BZA staff report, um, and is considered a legal pre-existing non-conforming lot, and we already have some structures there. And then with ADR-22-3, staff recommends denial of the temporary mobile home placement um, for ch under chapter 814 request. And the reasoning is that um, the standards under 814-4A1 have not been demonstrated to be in compliance, um, particularly with letter A. And I, I will read that one more time. Um, to obtain Monroe County Board of Health approval for septic system installation or provide proof of sewer hookup, which we don't have out here. So uh, does anyone have any questions about this one? Uh, <clears throat> do we know if either the house or the mobile home have a septic system available? Because I see that on your map, there was a, 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 an application granted, but did one go in for the house and or mobile home? Yeah, there is a 2013 septic permit for the new home, um, and that's still on file with the um, health department, and we have a copy of it in our records as well. So that bodes well for the new home, which was supposed to be a permanent home. Um, whoever did the review of the temporary mobile home placement, I think maybe glazed over that part of the septic review. Um, you know, it's supposed to be temporary and here we've had it eight, nine, almost 10 years in place. Um, so we try to nowadays read our ordinance and interpret it and abide by it and, and follow it. So. I hope that answered your question. Okay. Uh, I have one question. I think it's me misreading the implications of this, but on page 35, <coughs> there's a, uh, almost at the bottom of that form, it says this survey is conf notice confined to inspection. Accurate determination is difficult regarding systems not currently in use. But my understanding is that this system is currently in use because the, the mother uh, is, is living there. So uh, yeah. that seemed like a contradiction, but they put that on everything. I think that's just what their form says. They might. And earlier in the form, they did answer, is the dwelling currently occupied? And they put yes. Okay. So. Thank you. I mm -hmm. was confused about that. You straightened me out. Thank yep. you. Okay, are there other questions by the board of staff? If not, we'd like to hear from the petitioner, the petitioner's representative. If you would kindly come to the podium and sign in. Are you Mr. Deckard? Thank you for coming Good tonight. Good evening, if you didn't. Good evening. So tonight I'm asking for... Sir, I need to swear you in, sorry. Would you please uh, raise your right hand, state your name, and then do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Jason Decker, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So yes, we'd like to hear from you about this property. Okay, so uh, about three and a half months ago, I applied for a building permit to, to put a 20-foot additional in my garage. I was then contacted by the uh, planning department and I was advised that there were two major problems. They wanted to know if, if I had ever uh, renewed the medical hardship permit that was taken out in uh, 2013. And I said, well, no, you know, I've, I've had a lot of things on my plate. You know, my grandmother was in very ill health. Uh, she passed away on uh, May 30th, excuse me, of 2020. And uh, 
so in the course of, of, of this all happening, my mom had to move in and take care of my grandmother. And it ruined her financially during this process. And also it, it deteriorated her health very rapidly. So in the presentation, you'll see a letter from her doctor stating that she has to be in constant contact with family. Okay. Sorry. Um, there are some clarifications that I need to do. Um, the, the mobile home was not installed in 1966. My grandparents bought the land in 1968 from Paul Taylor. And I've lived on this piece of land my entire life. I just turned 49 years old uh, on the 14th of August. Happy birthday. Thank you. So when my grandmother passed away in 2020, my mom said, what am I going to do? I, I don't have a place to live. And I said, just stay here and I'll take care of you. She has no money. I pay all of her utilities, everything. And I even buy her food because she, she has no, she has no means to support herself. So in the course of, of applying for this building permit, all this came out. I was informed, uh, by the planning commission that the building permit that I was issued in 2013 was actually issued to me illegally because I had not been put through the minimum lot width variance as I should have. They took me through the minimum lot size variance, but apparently the minimum lot width variance got overlooked, forgot about, and Tammy stated several times that they had a high staff turnover rate back then, you know, whatever. But even, even back then, uh, I'm not sure about the turnover rate, but it, it got missed. Okay. So in the course of this, I reached out to Lee Jones to try to ask her what, what I should do. And she even stated in a meeting that Tammy and David and I, and, and several others had, that I should not have been charged for the lot variance because it, it was none of my doing. I had nothing to do with, with that part of compliance. And I appreciate Tammy putting in the report that, you know, she's recommending approval of that because I just, I just had nothing to do with it. But the medical hardship permit is a, a, a different subject totally. I tried to comply with everything that, that she asked me to do. I got the Monroe County Health Department on the line. They come out and they done a real estate septic inspection exactly like they did back in 2013. Randy Raines performed that. And the letter that he stated there were no visible signs of failure is, is actually in the, the, the attachments. They stated the same thing. Randy was not able to locate the septic back then. It was installed in 1968. There was no permit taken out for it back then, but it's not failing either. Okay. Um, I did not realize what was going on until this morning when I called Tammy and she said, well, we're, we're recommending denial of the mobile home medical hardship permit because of the septic problems. And I'm like, there's no problem with the septic. It's, it's been inspected. They do say that they were unable to locate it. I don't even know exactly where it is. The last person who could actually point to the area where it was at was my grandmother and she's gone. So I'm asking for your approval for this variance, minimum lot width variance, and also the medical hardship permit. So number one, I can keep my mom in the mobile home until the need is satisfied. And I don't have to tell you all what that means. I think we realize what that means. And she is in very ill health. Uh, the second thing is, is I wanna be able to enjoy my property and increase the value of it by adding on to my garage. And it, it, it's like a domino effect. So that's, that's probably all I've got to say. I mean, do, do you guys have any questions for me? Do members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have questions for Mr. Uh, Deckard? I'm sorry about your grandmother and your mother. I'm I sorry do. about it. It's, it's wrenching. 
Yeah, sorry about that. I I have to say, just not a question for you, but as somebody who has cared for elderly people, it's odd that those permits are a year at a time because that's not really how that works real life. It really, it really, there's something that happens, and that's what changes that living arrangement, not passage of time. And yeah, I, I'm sure it's a bureaucratic thing, but. It's a little unrealistic in some ways. Just well, like, I, I want to state that I'm not a big fan of mobile homes. Okay. I grew up in one. We were poor. Okay. And that's all we could afford. So I have absolutely no problem removing that home as soon as the need is satisfied. But right now I have an obligation to take care of my mother yes. because she can't take care of herself. Yes. And the, the only thing that Tammy is, is saying for the denial of the, of the mobile home medical hardship permit is because the septic system, the septic system is just fine. It's not failing. There's no signs of leaching anywhere. So I don't know what to say about that. I mean, there's, I, I done what was asked of me. I got the health department out there. They state that there's no visible signs of failure. I don't know what else I can do. Uh, may I ask, is your mother the only person who occupies that mobile home? Does yes, she my, live there alone? Yes, my mother's the only person there, yes. Thank you. Yes. And there, there also is a picture of my, my relative's RV from out of town. Um, she said we would get into that later, but they are gearing up to leave, so they'll be gone in another three weeks. Yes. That they'll be gone. Well, the, you so, know, your family is coming together, and that's important. And uh, you're providing some comfort and uh, and social involvement with your mother and your other family members, and that's important. You know, that's important. So I, we thank you for your testimony, and um, we heard also that you, uh, in your testimony, that you um, and your under oath, that you your grandmother could point to where the septic system was. So. Um, that's important to us as well. So with that, um, and may I also add that he said he is willing to remove that when this medical need for his mother is, is no longer the need. He well, also said that in his testimony, too. Yes, but like, like I said, I, I, I don't have to, I mean, we're all grown up human beings in this room. I don't have to tell you what that means. Right. So, yes. And, and, um, so anyway, thank you for your testimony. And I'd like I'm, to, I'm, I'm, oh, Mr. I may have a question okay. here. I'm, and again, I'm confused. There's, and there was a permit issued in 2013. Yes, there was a, what was that a permit for? It was the same thing. It was the same exact thing that I'm asking for now. It was a medical hardship mobile home permit. Okay. And that's the only thing that was applied for in 2013. Well, other than the building permit. Okay. And the for, building for my house. Yes. For your house. So you built the house based on that permit and you got the medical hardship. Now you want to add on to the house and you have a similar medical hardship that you want recognized and you are uh, promising that if your mom uh, moves out into to some sort of care facility or otherwise ceases living there, that you are going to haul off that mobile home promptly. Very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, um, the, so, the, so as I understand it, Mr. Loftman, the 2013 building permit was issued with, um, with the problem. It did not comply with the, um, with the minimum lot width variance. And so that was issued. The building permit was granted and they built the home. And now he has to retroactively go back and ask for permission to build what was built, what he already had permission well, I, to build. I think you, he's now expanding the garage. The, the garage, yes. yes. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not adding on to the house. It's just the garage. Yes. Is that correct, Tammy? Yeah, it was the garage that's triggering the minimum lot okay. width variance. 
Okay. But it also helps make the other one structures more compliant. Yeah, it just makes it more compliant because of uh, what was not done in 2013. So, uh, so that's my understanding of it. And does anyone else on the board have questions for Mr. Deckard? Mr. Daly? I don't have a question for Mr. Deckard. I do have a question for staff. Uh, is this an appropriate time? Yes, you can ask them. Uh, I'm a little curious. You were describing earlier, sorry, Tammy, you were describing earlier about $400 in fees and $100 and we'll have to return every year. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive my naivety as to the fee structure, but can you briefly explain that? Uh, yeah, under 814-4B, um, it talks about, you know, the administrator may extend the temporary permit and certif certificate for an additional 12-month period for good cause shown. Any request for an extension beyond the first extension shall be heard by the board subject to the filing, notice, and hearing requirements for variances. And so with this, it's a, it's a $400 fee to do an administrative review such as this, and then to issue that annual improvement location permit, it's $100 currently. And I don't think we have any plans right now to increase our fee schedule in any way, um, but I can't say three or four years out what that's going to so, be. So should he be approved, just from my own understanding here, should he be approved, he would have to return at the end of the 12 month period and pay you another hundred dollars for a review? Um, I would want to talk with, I think that's true um, because we've already seen the first one. So the administrative, we can't do it. So it would be coming back here basically annually yes. and seeing those fees. Okay. Thank okay. you. That, that's a very important clarification. Thank you, Mr. Daly. And um, so I'm sorry, I'm going to now open it up to the other members of the public who may be here to speak either in favor or in opposition. Just, just one more thing. I have no problem coming back every year. I, I, if that's all I have to worry about, I, I actually, I had a, a pretty close call about three weeks ago at work. I had a cardiac event. And they hauled me up to Methodist and luckily it was okay. But the stress of all this is yes. not making it any better. We're sorry for so, that, sir. We're uh, sorry. Thank, thank you for coming tonight. And we're thank sorry. you for hearing me. Thank you for taking care of your grandmother and your mother and with love. That's what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. That's right. So I'd like to open this up to members of the public who are here to speak in uh, support of this petition. If there's anyone here, and I see a gentleman coming to the podium um, who, while you're signing in, I'll also ask members of the public who are um, present online to raise their virtual hand or press star nine if they'd like to be recognized uh, to speak in favor of this request. So, sir, would you please state your name? My name is Bradley Rushton. Could you say? Rushton. Rushton. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and would you please raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. Thank you very much. You have three minutes to speak in favor of this. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Bradley Rushton, as I elaborated on. I live at 7182 West Walker Lane, which is directly west of where Mr. Deckard lives. Uh, we've known each other since we were kids. Lived out there, I knew his grandpa, his grandma, and uh, salt of the earth people. Uh, his grandpa was quite the codger, but everybody liked him. <laughs> uh, I know his mother, Pam, and uh, that was a younger man. She came out to help take care of my grandparents. Uh, they lived in the house right next door, which was 7152. It's a family two pieces of separate property. Um, known him all my life. And if I've ever needed anything, he's always been there for me and vice versa. Uh, I don't know the details of all the aspects that you folks are discussing, but I know that uh, as far as septic tanks are concerned or runoff, we're not having it. Uh, it's not on my property. 
Um, I don't know what else to elaborate on. I know firsthand that his mother is in ill health. Um, I know he had a really hard time with his mother passing, uh, and I feel for him. Uh, 2016, I lost my father. And before I did, he was offering help. He doesn't need the stress. And I appreciate the ordinances and whatever else you have to follow, but time's ticking. Let him, let him enjoy the time that he's got with his mother. It's a good structure. It's solid structure. Let them, let them have their time together. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Rushton. Thank, Thank you. you for coming tonight to support your friend and neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other members of the public who would like to speak in support of this petition? Seeing none, are there members of the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition, either in person here in Nat Hill courtroom, online, or on telephone? Please uh, make yourself known. If not, I return back to the Board of Zoning Appeals for further discussion and or a motion. Well, I'm pretty convinced that this is a pretty serious need situation uh, and and uh, I'm concerned about the septic but I should have been concerned about the septic you know many years ago yes. and it's it's not going to get a lot worse uh, right. if if and and the annual renewal is what should have been happening here all along, but I'm not going to hold that against Mr. Deckard. And I, so I'm, uh, I'm glad to hear what anybody else to say, but I'm certainly leaning in favor of granting this with the understanding, of course, that it will be renewed every year if needed. And um, Mr. Daly, did you want to make a motion, a motion out of that, especially with regard to the fee renewal fees? I don't know if the, we have the authority. Let's ask Mr. Schilling. Mr. Schilling, do we have the authority to waive the first year's fee on approval of this if it was thrown into the motion? All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to do it anyhow. And if you come back and find that it's not acceptable, then you can deal with it at that point. I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to add to your motion that we approve uh, ADR 22-3 um, and uh, waive the first year's renewal fee. Um, there we go. What about the $400 fee? The $400 fee for the $100 renewal. There's fee. a $400 fee. So, well, isn't there a four hundred dollar fee? Right. There's a four hundred dollar fee to come to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and then if it is approved, then the permit would be one hundred dollars that they would have to file. So, there's no option to waive that four hundred dollar fee since oh, we we don't even know that there's an option to waive the. This fee. But there's the minimum lot size variance the, that we partly created. Okay. That's okay. Um, so, and I will say that um, it's usually it's the plan commission that offers refunds. So, and I do know that the petitioner was intending to ask for a refund for the minimum lot width variance petition because of the error from the past. Um, so, so we could support that we, in our motion. We could we could support uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals makes a recommendation to the Plan Commission that the four hundred dollar right. fee be waived. I will restate my motion that we approve uh, variance. Is this twenty two dash twenty five? Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay, so the A. Okay, uh, twenty two dash twenty five. Um, as along with a strong recommendation to the planning the commission, commission uh, to waive the appropriated fees 
um, of the four hundred dollars. Okay, and then we'll have this the septic one next. Okay, there'll be two motions. So does anyone second this motion? Second. Okay. Would you please call the roll, Ms. Nestor Jellen? Yes, I'm going to modify it just a little bit. And if you tell me that it's not. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first motion is on VAR-22-25, which is a minimum lot with variance to Chapter 804. And this is a, an approve. A yes vote is an approval of the lot with variance, as well as your recommendation or forward of a recommendation to the plan commission to recommend approval of a future request for a refund. That has my blessing. Okay. All right, I will first. I, I'm a little, is he going to have to come up with the $400 and then ask for it's it? It's already back? been paid. All fees oh, have been paid. Sorry. It'll be a refund. Yes. If, if he requests it from the planning commission, wink, wink. Yes. Okay. So I'll Stop. go ahead and call the roll then. Or is there a second? Did we have a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Now, thank you. It's been moved and seconded. I will call the roll. Uh, Guy Lachman? Yes. D. Owens? No. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Oh. Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Okay, the motion carries four to one. Okay, and now we have the remaining temporary mobile home uh, placement um, variance or ADR. Yeah, 22-3. Is there a motion on this one? I move to approve uh, 22-3 Deckard Temporary Mobile Home Placement uh, under Chapter 814-4. I will second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve ADR-22-3. A vote in favor is a vote to approve. D. Owens? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Guy Laughman? Yes. Okay, it is approved five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Deckard and Mr. Rushton. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you. We move on to the next item on the agenda, item number seven, VAR-22-26, the Cadillac front setback variance to chapter 804 concerning one um, parcel in Clear Creek Township at 7102 South McCormick Lane. And this is a 0.34 acre parcel. And Mr. Myers, oh, it's nice to see you tonight. Thank you, nice to see you all as well. Thank you. All right, so this is the AR-22-26 Codleg Front Yard Setback Variance, Chapter 804. It's located at 7102 South McCormick Lane in Clear Creek Township. The petitioner is requesting an after-the-fact front yard setback variance from a home addition that was completed prior to the petitioner's ownership of the property. The home addition slash remodel was completed sometime in 2014 without permits. The existing single family residence did not meet the 40 foot setback as measured from center line of South Matlock Street at the time of the addition was completed. Um, as the home addition was completed without permits, a variance to the front yard setback was never sought as it should have been at that time. Uh, the addition measures approximately 658 square feet and abuts against the existing detached garage but does not directly connect the two. Um, the addition does not extend the encroachment into the front yard setback. The home was placed there already encroaching into the front yard setback. <laughs> so chapter 804 requires property zoned suburban residential to have a 25 foot setback measured from uh, right of way from local roads. Um, so the current location of the home uh, encroaches into that setback and therefore um, requires the front yard setback variance. Uh, when you expand on a structure that is already um, encroaching on something. So the 
what this situation comes to you tonight because the petitioner was in the process of selling the property when the buyer indicated that they were unable to locate a building permit for the addition slash remodel. Um, since then, uh, the petitioner has uh, applied for an after the fact building permit and applied for the appropriate after the fact variance uh, process um, to get the uh, right approvals and permits for this. Okay, so here we have the location map and it's in Clear Creek Township. <clears throat> and this is South McCormick Lane running north south. And then the street to the south of it is Matlock. Uh, we have the slope map here. Uh, both of these parcels, um, <clears throat> it was one of the recommendations by planning staff that the petitioner combine these parcels as they were originally two separate lots. Um, and since the uh, home structure likely uh, extends over that shared lot line that they just go ahead and combine them. I believe that that step has already been completed by the petitioner. Um, it's simply just adding some language to the D documentation that states that the two lots are combined for planning and zoning purposes. Okay, so here we have uh, aerial imagery from 2010 to 2022. You'll note that the addition was completed sometime in between here. Um, we also have some imagery uh, in the packets that indicates that the addition was under construction in 2014. Um, but here uh, on the screen in front of you um, is just more images from 2011 and 2022. And then some more images here. Here we have the uh, petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals stating their intent and giving a little synopsis about how they got into this situation, um, being that there was no permits for the property, uh, the addition to the property, and that they are now uh, going through the process to uh, get everything up to conformity. Here we have the site map uh, that the petitioner provided with annotations regarding distances from property line, as well as other information like the location of the septic tank, uh, as well as um, just a few other information items. That brings us to uh, the recommendation by planning staff. Uh, planning staff recommends approval of the front yard setback variance request, um, citing that the petitioner has followed all the appropriate planning pathways to receive after the fact approval for the residential addition and that practical difficulties have been met. I will now take any questions. Do members of the board have questions for staff? Okay, we move to the petitioner. The petitioner, the petitioner's representative is here and would like to um, make a statement to the board. We'd be happy to hear from you. It's not required. Online, is there anyone? Yes. Oh, yes. Brad, I believe you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. You may have to unmute yourself on your computer. I, it's somewhere usually in the bottom left-hand corner of your Zoom screen. If you could uh, try to unmute yourself there. It doesn't look like the petitioner is able to use their audio. I'm not sure what the issue is. Mr. Cadlick. So uh, well, while, uh, while he tries to unmute himself, let's go to the public. Are there members of the public here who would like to speak in support of this petition? Are there members of the public online or on the telephone who would like to speak in support of this petition? Please make yourself known. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? If you're online or on the telephone, please let us know. And we'll go back to Mr. Cadlick. Mr. Cadlick, if we could hear you, um, if you can unmute yourself, that's fine. We'll continue to try to uh, have a discussion among ourselves here at the board. Um, if there's anything that anyone would like to add, I'm tending toward approving this. Staff, he seems to have worked so well with staff and uh, staff is recommending approval. And for me, that matters. So I don't know how other members of the board feel. I'm convinced it was a very thorough uh, proposal that was put together. I will go ahead and make a motion to support staff's recommendation to approve variance 22-26. 
Is there a second? I'll second that. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, Mr. Cadlick. We're sorry that we can't hear you, but we're moving forward and we hope you, um, I, we hope this works out. If it doesn't, we'll have to <laughs> okay. deal so, with that then. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to approve the Cadlick front setback variance VAR-22-26. A vote in favor is a vote to approve. D. Owens? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Guy Lofman? Yes. Okay, the vote passes five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Cadlick. We're sorry we couldn't hear from you, but congratulations. Okay, thank you. And we move on now to items number eight and nine, VAR-22-30 A and B. And I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the name correctly. It's Hona or Haney. Um, front yard setback variance to chapter 804 and the Pona or Haney buildable area 15% slope variance to chapter 804 concerning a two and a half acre parcel um, at 9264 West Mallory Road. And I believe Mr. Myers is going to lead us through this again. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, this is the Pony uh, front yard setback variance and buildable area 15% slope variance to chapter 804, located at 9264 West Mallory Road in Richland Township, section 19. Um, the request for this petition is um, that the petitioner is proposing a 3,133 square foot addition to the existing single family residence located on this property. The petitioner is also in the process of requiring a demolition permit to remove uh, the existing two-car garage on the property. The location of the proposed addition will encroach into slopes greater than 15%, and the location of the proposed uh, new attached garage uh, will encroach into the required 50-foot front yard setback. According to Chapter 804, slopes greater than 15% are classified as non-buildable area, and the proposed location of the accessory structure is delineated on the petitioner's site plan, which is Exhibit 4 in your staff packet. Um, the front yard setback requirement for this property in this zoning district, which is agricultural rural reserve, is 50 feet when there is no direct frontage um, on the property. So here we have the location map. It's in Richland Township. And then um, West Mallory Road is down here. The slope map here, as you'll note, a uh, lot of slopes greater than 15% everywhere in red is over 15% in slope. And we'll note here in a moment, uh, looking at the site plan, that the addition, proposed addition, will encroach into the slope areas to the west of the existing home. The detached garage that you see on the bottom of the slope map here will be removed, and an attached garage will be constructed extending south from the existing home that will still encroach into the 50 foot front yard setback, but will uh, be, not, be not as much of an encroachment. Here we have the site plan as provided by the petitioner. As you'll note, uh, the proposed addition extends into the 15% uh, slopes. And then again, here you'll note that the detached garage is listed here to be removed, and the proposed new attached garage here as well, which will be extending, I believe, approximately um, 13 feet into the 50-foot front yard setback. There is an overhead power line located on the property that extends uh, running um, to the northeast, and also the existing septic field over here as well. Both of those uh, features do limit the buildable area on the property that is under the 15% slope, um, which uh, feeds into staff's recommendation on this petition. Here we have some on the ground photographs of the petition site. You'll note the, um, pro uh, the power line here on the right photograph and in the left photograph. Some more photographs here of the petition site and to give you an idea of what the slopes will look like on the right photograph. The petitioner is intending to uh, build a walkout basement type design for the structure. Um, so that will uh, assist in limiting some of the disturbance to the property aside from um, the cutting into the slope. And um, yeah. Here we have uh, one more angle of the sloped area that extends off of the existing single family residence, as well as the letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals from the petitioner stating their intention of the addition.
Finally here, I've included uh, just a copy of the subdivision plant. It is tract number three of the Robert Hone uh, minor subdivision. And you note that it, there is an existing uh, easement in case there were any questions about accessing this property, it does have a plot of easement. All right, that brings me to staff's recommendation. Planning staff is recommending approval of the front yard setback variance request, as well as approval of the buildable area, 15% slope variance request, um, citing that the petitioner is reducing the current front yard setback encroachment of the existing detached garage through the submission of a demolition permit for the uh, older detached garage structure. And then um, for the buildable area, uh, citing that practical difficulties have been met in that development of the areas less than 15% slope are constrained by an existing over power line, as well as the existing septic field. And the petitioner is minimizing slope disturbance by building into the existing slope through the walkout basement type design, instead of just um, clear cutting and grading that area down. I will now take any questions. Do you have questions? Does the board have questions for Mr. Myers or any of the other staff? And that includes you, Dee? <laughs> I have no questions. I have none. Mr. Okay, Mr. Loftedman and then Ms. Owens. Uh, the, as I understand it, you cannot administratively uh, approve this 15%, but you're recommending we approve it. But I, if I'm reading this correctly, it says the petition site is constrained from, however, there are other areas on the property that could accommodate the expansion. So I don't, I'm a little surprised that they could expand in an area that wouldn't include the 15%, but you're recommending a, approval of the, of the, of the, of the variance. So can you, can you help me? Understand Absolutely. That? And thank you for pointing that out. Um, that was a, an older version of that paragraph that I, I uh, forgot to correct. So essentially at first glance, it looks like a lot of the property is available for buildable area standpoint, um, especially considering um, the slope map here that you can see on the screen. Uh, that looks like there's plenty of area to the east of the structure um, as well as to the north that could accommodate such developments that the petitioner is proposing. Um, but upon going to the site in person and seeing for, um, you know, the exact location of the overhead power line and seeing its height, um, it, it was determined that the area that was previously determined to be suitable for an expansion was uh, not as suitable as previously thought. Um, therefore, um, it is our recommendation that um, given the constraints as we saw them on the actual site, that uh, we would recommend approval. Okay, I think I, I think I followed that and let me make sure I did. So are you saying that on second, you know, on closer examination, there really aren't other areas on the property that could, could accommodate the expansion? Correct. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank That's you. A big help. Thank you, Ms. Owens. Yeah, I was just saying that I didn't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so then is the petitioner here or the petitioner's representative, sir? Um, please come up and sign in. Would you please state your name? It's Robert B. Hohen. Junior, Hohen. Uh, Hohen in a garden. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hohen in the garden. It's Would a hard one. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And uh, just tell us what you'd like to do and your reasons for it. So several years ago, um, we started the process of building the house or looking into it. Uh, decided we were going to buy a place in the market. Went crazy so we figured okay we better go build we got this land um i had a company come out and was going to build it and he looked at the slope and he's like yeah that's that's you know it's over at the 15 but I, you know we could probably get this going you know and i said okay well i ended up not using him or nothing um year goes by or so we designed our own house had a guy come out built it all uh, or designed it all and another 
situation about the front, which I wish I could have built up front, but there's a septic finger system and tank out there too. So our only spot was to really to go out the back. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually building the basement deeper than, than a normal basement just to accommodate for some of that slope to try to get in that when they put the, the original house in, that slope in the back was um, my surveyor guy said that that's kind of artificial dirt. That's what they pushed over the end. And that's why that slope seems so bad, but it, it's still over the 15% slope. Um, but as you get to the bottom of that picture that you saw, it does kind of start to come back up just a little bit. So it's not too bad. And we think that the deep basement is really going to help out with that. So, um, but that's, other than that, uh, Mr. Myers hit, you know, everything else on the head. So he's, well, he done good research. So thank you for that, Mr. Holland. Do members of the board have questions for Mr. Holland? Okay. Well, thank you for coming tonight. And then we'll open it up to public. Okay. And uh, if anybody contests too much, you'll have a chance to come back. Is there any member of the public who is present who would like to speak either in favor or in opposition to this request? If so, please come to the podium, raise your virtual hand on Zoom, or press star nine on the telephone. We see none, right, Jackie? So I bring it back to the board for further discussion and or a motion. Uh, I think we can make a motion on this. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> that would be good, <laughs> yes. Um, I move to approve a variance 22-30A and 22-30B having to do with a front yard setback variance and also the buildable area 15% slope variance to chapter 804. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve VAR-22-30A front yard setback and 30B buildable area. A motion has been made to approve. A vote in favor is a vote to approve the variances. Pamela Davidson? Uh, yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Guy Laughman? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Holland, for coming and Mrs. Holland. Have a beautiful build. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to move now. There are three uh, variances concerning the porthole tourist cabin. Uh, there are variances 22-31A, 22-31B, and 22-31C uh, pertaining to minimum lot size, front yard setback, and tourist cabin, uh, condition 48D4 to Chapter 802. And this concerns, um, as I said, the porthole tourist cabin at the 8900, roughly speaking, East South Shore Drive, um, uh, parcel, I'm not going to read that out, um, owned by Lake Lemon Phi LLC. And I miss Cecilia, so oh, great. We'd like to he hear the porthole story. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay. okay, so we saw this a few months ago. Oh, not a few months ago, it was in May. Um, the porthole in their tourist home and cabin um, received a, an approved use variance for tourist home or cabin use for short-term rentals. Um, so they were required to submit a commercial site plan, is, which is the next step for a tourist home or cabin. Um, we knew that we would be looking at variances. We just didn't know exactly how many and what. Um, so they got their certified site plan from Deckard Land Survey. Um, so we have three variances here uh, that we're looking at tonight. The minimum lot size in the suburban residential zone is only required if all the other design standards can't be um, met. So since there are other variances that are needed, the minimum lot size is also required. So the property is 0 0.19 acres and the minimum lot size for the SR zone is one acre. Um, this is not particularly unusual for the Lake Lemon area. 
There is a front yard setback requirement from chapter 804. Um, so this would be a yard fronting on any street. So technically it is a corner lot. Um, we did a little bit of digging into this and our definition of street would still include kind of that private driveway. Um, so there is just one 25 foot setback where the existing structure is, um, let's see, is 19 feet from the property boundary. So a six foot encroachment. The third and final variance request is actually from the standards of a tourist home or cabin. Um, it states that parking of vehicles in any yard or setback um, is prohibited. So because of the site plan, I think I have a closer, there we go. Um, because of the parcel um, and its configuration, it also contains a pretty large septic field. Um, the, all of the parking for the, the cabin is, is located within that front setback. Um, okay. So the slide that I just zoomed right by, this one is just a parcel size map. This identifies all other, it highlights in green, all other parcels nearby that are one, under one acre and also zoned SR. So as we can see here, it's not really an unusual occurrence uh, off of South Shore Drive. So staff is recommending approval of all three variances, 31A, B, and C. Um, the reasoning is that in order to approve an application for a design standards variance, I'm reading the wrong line, excuse me. Um, our reasoning is that because the petitioner received a use variance for an existing structure to be utilized as a tourist home or cabin, in order to comply with the zoning ordinance and obtain those necessary permits, that these three variances would be the minimum necessary. Okay, do members have questions for staff? Mr. Daly? My only question is because of the contingency of B and C, if we were to approve all three, would we need to break them up? In, in motions? I don't no. believe so. If you're going to approve all three, you don't have to. Okay, thanks. Okay, are there other questions for staff? Well, I think I remember this from coming yes. up before. Yes. And this is this has been a rental and a, a, a long term rental, and they're going to convert it to a short term rental. Is that? I'm not sure if it ha was a long term rental at any point. So long term is over 30 days. So this case was originally um, has been in the works for quite a while. It started as an enforcement case because tourist home or cabin use is not permitted at all in the SR zone. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I was close, but yes. Long. So, okay. Well, uh, we do you have questions? I do not. No. Okay, so let's open it up to the petitioner, the petitioner's representative. If, um, if you're here, please come to the microphone. Welcome back. How are things going over there? <laughs> good, good. Well, please sign in, gentlemen. <laughs> and if you could state your names uh tom sands rob sands okay uh and if uh you would each raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth i do, I do. yes okay great well together you have 15 minutes uh to tell us what's going on and so we originally like uh ann was stating we you know we petitioned we were doing some a little bit of long term running it out and then obviously airbnb and then uh the pandemic hit yeah and we were trying to keep the place alive. So that was a big thing for helping us keep it going out there. Um, other than that, we went through the due diligence of bringing everything forthcoming. So I would state, I mean, I would hopefully we would get it approved. There are some new owners have taken over since then. Uh -huh. we've, we've turned it over. We're trying to help them through the end of the year. That's our goal. Uh huh. Keep the porthole alive. Uh-huh. Uh, do you have anything else to add? 
No? Well, um, congratulations on making it through the pandemic and for selling the property. And Thank I know you. you're cherished by the community. Well, I yeah. That. Yeah. So uh, do you have questions? Does any member of the board have questions for the gentleman? Okay, then we're going to turn it over to the public right. and get Thank on with much. this. Thank, Thank you. you for coming back. Yeah. Are there people here who are in favor of this petition? If so, please uh, let us know. Come to the podium. If you're online, uh, press your raise your virtual hand or press star nine. And we don't see anybody. Is there anybody opposed in the room, online, or on the telephone? Okay, then we can come back to the board and we can consider a motion or have further discussion. I move we approve variances 2231A concerning uh, porthole tourist cabin minimum lot size variance. 2231B, uh, porthole, porthole tourist cabin front yard setback variance, and 2231C, porthole tourist cabin, uh, I'm sorry, CO. It's a variance to condition 48D. Four. Variance to condition 48D4, of course. Yeah, it's concerning the parking. No uh, second. Okay, it's set, moved and seconded. If you could please call the roll. So uh, the, the vote is in favor of approving 31A, minimum lot size, 31B, front yard setback, and 31C, condition 48, which is parking in the front setback. A vote yes is a vote to approve. Margaret Clements? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Guy Lofman? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Okay, motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you, Tom and Robin. Thank you for making it a special place. Take care. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, item number 13, VAR 22 32, the Brackemeyer buildable area 15% slope variance to Chapter 804 concerning. Um, a two and a half roughly acre property in Clear Creek Township at 2284 South Sunday Drive. And this is Mr. Brown. Thank you for walking us through this. Thank you. Uh, this variance request was triggered by a residential building permit, R-22-769, which was filed with the purpose of constructing a new home on a currently vacant lot. Uh, a permit for the renewal of an existing septic system on the property has been issued, WW-22-163. A permit has also been issued for a driveway entrance, RW-22-230, but final inspection is currently on hold pending the decision of this variance. During the review process, it was found that this proposed area for this home would encroach on a 15% slope, well, an area of slope greater than 15% due to this the variance was applied for. However, during the research process, it was found that back in at least 2005, as seen in the picture on the right, that this area was part of a baseball field and the slope on this lot is considered to be man-made due to that. The construction plans for the home also include a walkout basement, which will work with the slope and reduce land disturbance during the construction process. Here we see on the left a sort of zoomed in plan of the air of the proposed residence. And this air <laughs> and on the right, we see a site plan that kind of shows the dip that the slope causes. But again, a walkout basement is proposed, which will significantly work with the slope and reduce environmental damage. So due to this, we recommend approval of the variance as there's no practical way to build on this property without building across an area of slope. Okay, do members of the board have questions for Mr. Brown or other staff? No, D, okay. Um, then if um, um, Mr. Busby or Ms. Brackemeyer are here and would like to address, or their representative, and would like to address the board, uh, please come to the podium or, oh, I see online, the hand is raised by Mr. Busby. And so if, uh, if he needs to be unmuted by tech services. And Mr. Busby, you have 15 minutes if you're able to unmute yourself. Hello, yes. Um, my name is Levi Busby. I appreciate you guys uh, 
getting this on your docket for this evening. Um, appreciate the recommendation of approval by Mr. Brown and his staff. Um, in regards to this property, uh, as you kind of saw in the photo that he had there with the uh, topography uh, map, it shows the neighboring house. Um, that neighboring house is all also on a walkout basement of sorts. And um, the septic field for this new build actually needs to go behind the property on the flatter grade, which would be the only other opportune spot to build the house. Um, the reason that poses problems with the septic is you can't push the septic back because it pushes it into a drainage and utility easement. And you don't want it to go in front of the house because then it would be, um, you know, consistently pumping uphill and pose other issues in the future. Also, if we were to look at redeveloping the land and raising up the, the current grade to a less than 15%, um, grade, what we would run into is then we would be pushing water onto that neighboring property and interfering with their proper drainage as well. So that is why we, um, advocated for this variance and, um, with the walkout, as Mr. Brown stated, that will, um, help us do minimal earthwork and uh, minimal reshaping of the existing property. Okay, thank you, Mr. Busby. I'm going to ask my colleagues here if they have questions for you. Do you members of the board have questions for Mr. Busby? We see none. So thank you, Mr. Busby. We're going to now open it up to the public. Are there members of the public here in person or online or on the telephone who would like to speak in favor of this petition? We don't see anybody. Is there a member of the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? Please make yourself known here publicly or uh, online or on the telephone. And we'll just wait, just give people a chance if they're slow to find the button. Okay, so we bring it back to members of the Board of Zoning Appeal for further discussion and or a motion. <laughs> we're looking at you expectantly. If we're looking at me, hopefully, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I will. Oh. Yeah, go right ahead. Oh, yeah. that would be great. Right. And variance uh, twenty-two thirty-two. I will motion for approval. End of statement. Because of practical difficulties. Yes. Sure. Is there, is there a second? Yes, second. Okay, Ms. Nestor Jellen. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve VAR-22-32, Brackmeyer Buildable Area 15% slope. A vote in favor is a vote to approve the variance. Skip Daly? Yes. Guy Lofman? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Busby. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you all very much for uh, hearing our variants. Have a great evening. You as well. Okay, we're moving on to item number 14, and that's VAR-22-33, the Carroll minimum lot size variance to Chapter 804 concerning a property at 3900 East Dora Road owned by David and Geraldine Carroll and Ms. Chris Elias. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Ann. Okay. So the petitioner is requesting a minimum lot size. Um, this area requires, the, so the area is zoned agricultural rural reserve. So it does have a minimum lot size of 2.5 acres. The property is currently 1.33 acres and is unplatted. So the site was originally developed with a single family residence um, and it did experience a fire earlier this year. So the intent of the variance request is to rebuild a stick built single family residence. Um, it will be utilizing the same footprint. So it was considered pre-existing non-conforming under chapter 803 since it didn't meet minimum lot size. 
and they are still utilizing the same footprint, um, but the height will be, they're will, they wanting to add a second story. So it technically removes the pre-existing non-conforming status um, and you know, obtaining those minimum lot size variants, they'll obtain it once and we'll run with the land. So a review of the surrounding properties zoned agricultural rural reserve. Um, this is about a 0.6 mile buffer. It does show a few other parcels in the area, but not too many that are also under the 2.5 minimum. So this is their certified plot plan. Um, so that's the same footprint, um, the septic, um, all of the building permit review will be um, is basically pending whether or not this variance would be approved. Um, so they have gone through. So because the building was technically um, kind of burned and it's now a, a redevelopment, so they did have to obtain this certified plot plan um, versus properties that are already developed um, wouldn't maybe only necessarily need to get a, a, a site plan that's scaled and not necessarily certified. So staff does recommend approval of the variance from the minimum lot size from chapter 804. Okay, um, I'd like to give the owners of the property our condolences for the burn of their home and we're sorry for that. But that being said, I would like to ask my colleagues if they have questions for staff. Okay, so is the petitioner or the, sir, yes, please come to the microphone and sign in. We're sorry that you lost that yet, that home. Uh, we were lucky nobody was injured. So that's, that's right. Great. We'll be thankful for that. And would you please state your name? Yeah, David Michael Carroll. And please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you. So just tell us what you want. And Well, so we, we bought the house from our uh, some friends of ours who in 2020, when the pandemic hit, <coughs> I work in healthcare. My whole family works in healthcare. And um, so there was a lot of panic going on, and our elderly, elderly neighbors wanted to sell the, the house. So my wife and I, I took a chunk of my uh, retirement to uh, buy it. That's going to be our retirement location. And, um, and then in February of this year, we had the fire that, that destroyed it. Um, and all we're asking is just to rebuild where it's at. Um, we're not going up a true second story. We're just going to have 16-foot ceilings instead of eight-foot ceilings. And then a little loft area in the back for our grandkids' playroom and me in office so I can work from home some. So... That'll um, be nice. And that's really all we're asking for. Well, thank you for your service throughout all oh, you're this welcome. crisis. And you're I'm welcome. sorry that this uh, happened to you during that difficult time. So I'm going to ask my colleagues if they have questions for Mr. Carroll. No? And um, okay, well, thank you for your testimony. If, if I could say one thing, yes. being, being in healthcare, and yes. I don't want to take your time, yes. but... I know the notes from these meetings don't show compassion, but the compassion that you guys showed to that gentleman earlier who was caring for his mother should be documented somewhere. So well, thank, thank you, for, you that. for that, sir. Thank, we, and I know he really appreciated that. Yeah, and so. we are a community. And even though we're sitting here behind the desk, you know, we, we're trying to help our community and right. weigh everything. And we know it's not easy for Yeah, everybody. And we appreciate that the, the folks down at the, at the planning department, they, they've really, they had to spoon feed me because I've done my best to stay out of courthouses my whole life. <laughs> so I really didn't know any of the process. So they were very more than helpful. So thank well, thank you, you thank Mr. You. Carroll. Um, well, now I'm going to open it up to members of the community. Are there members of the community who would like to speak in favor or in opposition to this petition? If so, please come to the podium, raise your virtual hand, press star nine. If not, we can entertain a motion or further discussion. <laughs> I move we approve variance 22-33, Carol minimum lot size variance, lot size variance. I'll second that. Okay, we have to give the reasons, and the reasons are practical difficulties um, uh, that the proposal will cause the least 
harm or uh, uh, aggravation to the soil and neighbors, and that there are economic considerations as well, and that uh, this is the minimum variance necessary to eliminate practical difficulties in the use of the property. So, and it doesn't promote any conditions detrimental to the use of this property or surrounding properties. Does that satisfy it? Okay, so um, would you please call the roll? It's been moved and seconded to approve BAR-22-33, the Carroll Minimum Lot Size Variance to Chapter 804. A vote yes is a vote to approve. Guy Laughman? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. All right, motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Thank you. good luck in your home, and I hope it's everything exceeds your expectations. Right, Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, so we're moving on to item 15. We're moving along here. It's VAR-22-34. Um, can we discuss these together? Okay, and variance 22-36 for Arnold General Contractor, a use variance for lot A and a use variance for lot B concerning properties at 7850 North Wayport Road and 7854 North Wayport Road. And, um, and Mr. Myers, we look here forward to hearing from you about these. Thank you. All right, so this one's a little bit different. This is a use variance request, not a design standards variance request. So the conditions or standards that must be met uh, to receive staff support uh, are a bit different. Um, instead of uh, practical difficulties, there is uh, hardship or unnecessary hardship. So that's one distinction that I'd like to point out before beginning. <clears throat> All right. So this is BAR-22-34 and BAR-22-36. Both of them are the Arnold General Contractor use variances to lot A and lot B of the property located at 7850 North Wayport Road and 7854 North Wayport Road. The request is for two use variances because they are two separate lots of record to establish a general contractor business at this uh, location. Lot A is 6.65 acres and lot B is 6.21 acres of the former Worms Way Type A plat. Uh, the petitioner desires to relocate his general contractor business, which is currently located at 3440 South Leonard Springs Road to the subject property. Uh, it's zoned agricultural rural reserve and was originally developed pursuant to a 1995 special exception for agribusiness to allow for the establishment of Worms Way. So general contractor is defined in chapter 802 and it is listed as permitted use in the following zoning districts, general business or GB, light industrial LI and heavy industrial HI. It is listed as conditional use in the agricultural rural reserve zoning district However, looking at uh, chapter 813, which talks about conditional uses, um, it specifies that a, a, a general contractor uh, as a rural category. Um, so the standard definition of a general contractor um, does not apply for this particular uh, use in this zone, only a rural version of it. Uh, we can expand on that if we have any questions in a bit. Um, so basically since the uh, the use of general contractor is not permitted in this zoning district. Um, in order to receive approval, uh, the petitioner is um, able to either petition to uh, a, establish a use variance, which enables a particular use to be added to the specific property in a zoning district that does not normally permit that use, or that they can uh, submit a rezone request, which goes through the plan commission process and is ultimately decided upon by the Board of Commissioners. Now, one thing to note about this particular property is that there are some recent cases that um, have seen um, the Board of Zoning Appeals as well as the Plan Commission and the Board of Commissioners. Um, so case number 1905-VAR-28, that is a use variance to add metal fabrication um, <clears throat> that was approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals by a three to two vote on June 5th, 2019. Um, interestingly enough, a commercial site plan, which was the next step for that particular uh, process, was never filed by the property owner or petitioner. 
Um, so, uh, we kind of, that one just kind of just got dropped off. Uh, the use never came to fruition and, uh, the property remained vacant. Um, I produced a uh, link to the, that BZA packet in the uh, packet that you received for this petition tonight. Um, there's also uh, REZ-21-3, which is was a rezone uh, request from Agricultural Rural Reserve to Light Industrial, or LI. And that went to the Plan Commission, who gave a positive recommendation, uh, voting 7-0 to zero on October 5th, 2021. And that was ultimately denied by the county commissioners by a vote of three to zero on October 27th, 2021. Um, a lot of neighbors uh, appeared during that meeting uh, throughout the entire process, really. And um, there was a lot of conversation about um, how the rezone would affect um, their properties and their feelings for how it would not fit in the character of the area. Um, so ultimately, uh, that rezone request uh, for uh, Transitioning from agricultural rural reserve to light industrial, uh, what failed? Um, the intention behind that rezone was to establish uh, a use that uh, developed, um, I believe, it was uh, parts for a um, medical devices, um, and that use did not come to fruition because the rezone was not approved. Okay, so getting back to some of the details of the property itself, it is the former Worms Way site. It is located on Wayport Road. Um, here we have the slope map that shows the structures as well as some of the areas that are over 15% in slope on the property. And here we have some aerial pictometry of the petition site as well as um, you know, a general area of some of the residences in the area. Some on the ground photography here as well of the vacant Wormsway property. Um, you can still see some of their signage remains as well as the structures. Um, the structure on the south end of the property, which is in this picture, was built in the 90s. Um, and then the uh, lot to the north uh, was developed later on, I believe in 2001, to uh, accommodate the expanding business of Worms Way. Some of the items that would uh, follow this petition, if it were to be approved tonight, uh, would be to submit a commercial site plan, um, change in use specifically. Um, so changing from the agribusiness use to um, the general contractor use constitutes a commercial site plan and updates to that commercial site plan regarding um, current conditions such as, uh, or standards such as parking, landscaping, um, and bioretention would all be evaluated at that time. Just more photographs here of the petition site and the structures existing there, as well as um, getting an idea of how the site looks on the ground related to tree line and just uh, the site itself. All right, here we have the petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals stating their intent and their requested variances for uh, the use variance to allow general contractor, as well as the consent form to the current owner of the property. Since the petitioner is not technically the current owner, uh, we require consent letters uh, in order to uh, proceed with the filing of the petition and the presentation of the petition. Next, I have some items here that uh, cover the petitioner's plans for the property. Um, so these are just uh, rough uh, depictions of the site plan that they intend to implement. Um, <clears throat> building A is the south, proper, or south structure, building B is the middle structure, and building C is the northern structure. And um, this is all included in the packet as well that was produced. Um, so they are intending to store some equipment uh, behind building C, which is in the north. Um, as well as do some work in um, <clears throat> the other areas. They intend to park vehicles between buildings A and B. Um, and the other images that you see here on the right side of the screen um, on this page and on this page are of the existing business, uh, which is on Leonard Springs Road. So kind of showing you how they want to tailor their current use at that location to a new location, which is the petition site. Here I've also included the uh, Wormsway Administrative Type A subdivision plat, uh, which indicates that both lots are individual lots of record, as well as um, you know, other details such as um, easements and lot dimensions. 
And here I have included a use table for the RR zone. Um, so all of these uses here uh, are what are permitted in the agricultural reserve zone. You'll note that um, in here, general contractor is listed as conditional. Again, that's general contractor rule, which specifically requires there to be a residence on the property. Um, so since they don't fit that specific classification of rural general contractor, they have to go through the use variance process. Uh, instead of the standard conditional use variance process, which you would see normally for a use that is listed here with a C for conditional. Um, the columns that have the little I, um, that's just the level of intensity that's related to that specific use. Um, we use that for different um, applications, um, but I don't believe that that's really um, too much to think about with this petition specifically. Okay, that brings me to staff's recommendation. Um, due to uh, the, the criteria that use variances normally have to follow, uh, the five criteria A, B, C, D, and E listed within the agenda packet, um, specifically um, item D, which is the strict application of the terms of the zoning ordinance will constitute an unnecessary hardship if applied to the property for which the use variance is sought. Um, planning staff is recommending denial of both use variance requests, um, citing that there is no substantial evidence that the property cannot be utilized under one of the permitted uses listed in the Ag RR zoning districts, and therefore it does not meet criteria 812-5D. I will now take any questions. Do members of the board have questions for Mr. Myers? I, I do, yes. Me? Thank you. Um, so you're saying that the variance, do I get this right? You're saying the variance is not needed. So what are we doing here? Kind of, is that it? Let me clarify. So normally, um, so on the use table, general contractor is listed as conditional. So normally when we see that, it means that uh, we go through the conditional use variance process, which is very similar. They would have to produce, um, uh, the process is very similar to tonight. Uh, it would just be a CDU a variance request, um, and they'd have to meet special conditions that are outlined in Chapter 813. Um, but because in Chapter 813, uh, the use of general contractor is specifically classified as rural, meaning that it needs to have a primary residence, we have to do a use variance. And that's what they're petitioning for, excuse me, tonight. Does that answer your question? Uh -huh. Kind of, sort of. I'll keep listening. As I read the material, I didn't get it, and I'm not sure I still do, but I'll keep listening. Thank you. I think the difference is, D, if I might, and staff can correct me, is that he doesn't live on the property. No, I, I, I understand that, uh, but, okay. Okay. So yeah. what, but is that saying then that there's no way this can be done? I guess maybe that's my ultimate question. Yeah, let me clarify. So this is the standard process for when a use is not permitted on a property. So if you're looking at the use table and there's a blank space for a particular use, say, um, uh, for example, um, you know, event center is not listed as a permitted use in a particular zone. If you wanted to do an event center in that zone on that property where it says it's not permitted, this would be your avenue for the use variance. It's a higher bar to get over. Um, due to the criteria that has to be met, um, but you can still petition for it and um, try for an approval by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay, thank you. Can you uh, Drew, can you put up the standards for a use variance as well? And the other option, D, is for them to pursue a rezone to a commercial zoning district. So a use variance is sort of a a shortcut request as opposed to going through a rezone process. And um, because it's considered sort of a shortcut, it's the bar is very high because they have to say that there's no other economically viable use for the property at all under the current zone. And a rezone would be what apparently failed on October the 5th of last year. Even Correct. though, even though it got a unanimous recommendation from the planning commission it was denied three to zero by the county commissioners and at that point you discussed that neighbors came out against this correct looking at the map can you tell me who these neighbors are 
Um, I can't say specifically, but I know that there is a neighborhood. Um, Looking at your map, it sees it's kind of doesn't look like there, there's anyone anywhere around. So the, if the neighbors are here, they, they will speak. So I, um, did you have a question, Ms. Davidson? Oh, I, I was going to ask about the neighbors because you reported that there was a lot of concern about the use of the property. And I saw no attachments in our documentation, either before or against from neighbors. And I was wondering. Or the, what, or the rationale how a seven to nothing planning commission yeah. could be overwhelmingly denied by the commissioners without that documentation of the rationale of why neighbors sure so i will say that i did receive some responses from neighbors inquiring about more information um, i stated that they could submit uh, letters to the planning department regarding their position regarding the case um, and also stated that they could attend the meeting and voice their concerns then as well I would like to ask how long this building has been vacant. That I'm not sure of. Um, at least 2019? Because at, at least, yes, from at least the other, uh, the previous variance petition. Oh, it's eight years, give or take. Okay, eight years. Okay. I thought Wormsway went out of business in 2017. So, so then that would be five years? Five years. Okay. Five. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long COVID. Okay. Are there any other questions for staff? Um, Mr. Loftman? Yeah. I'm looking at the recent cases. Those both concern this property. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So it's time to have the petitioner or the petitioner's representative come up and address the um, the Board of Zoning Appeals. I see there's a Mr. or Ms. Martin on uh, Zoom as well. Um, do you know who will be speaking for the petitioner, Mr. Myers? The petitioner is listed as John Arnold. Okay. No, it's, no, it's AH and SH LLC. Martin Hyde for AH and SH LLC. We're the petitioner. Oh, yes, Mr. Well, uh, is your name, well, would you please state your name, sir? My name is Martin Height, H E Y D T. Okay. I, I, I own AH and SH LLC, the property owner. Okay, would you kindly raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Oh, thank you. And uh, would you just tell us what, what's going on over there, what you want to do, and why this property is where you want to do it? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, first of all, just a few questions that were asked while I was listening there. The property has been vacant for uh, seven years. Okay. Uh, the way I understood it, and now I have a little more clarification from Drew, uh, a, rural a rural general contractor is allowed in an ag zone. And now I understand what, because he's not going to live on the property, there's no way to live on that property, commercial property. He is basically petitioning I am or he is together to allow a general contractor, not a rural general contractor, which requires a little more uh, information. So what I'm, I'm going to first speak to the reason of the denial, you know, that, that no substantial evidence exists, that it, it cannot be utilized under one of those permitted properties. The property has been for sale for seven years. There's not been one of the listed type businesses on the table on uh, for page it is 92, I think, that has made an offer on this property. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. First of all, it's not economically feasible. You have to use the structures. You're certainly not going to tear them down. Uh, you could not open a fruit farm there. You cannot open a Christmas tree farm. You cannot open. They're, they're, they're just not economically feasible in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So the property has been, like I said, listed for sale for seven years. The only company that's made an offer is John Arnold and his company, Arnold Asphalt LLC. He, 
we determined, well, you are a general contractor, as he's been told by the by the county, you're considered a general contractor. But now I understand the difference between general contractor rural versus general contractor. So that's the variance we're going to seek. Can he go in there as a general contractor? What does he have to do to do that? Okay, so I want to make that real clear. It's been on the market for seven years. Now I'm going to speak to the reason to grant the variances. Financial hardship. Since the property has been vacant for five years, it's been on the market for seven years. Wormsway was in there for two. In the five years it's been vacant, I've invested $800,000 in maintenance, upkeep, et cetera, including $200,000 in property taxes. So in the five years, if that's not the definition of economic hardship, I don't know what is. That's not sustainable forever. Uh, neighbors that you mentioned, neighbors had spoke out against the uh, light industrial zoning before, and I understood that. But many of those same people said, we really appreciate how nice you keep the property looking. Well, it's not sustainable forever. It just doesn't make any sense for anybody to do that forever. John and his business fit perfectly. It's As he points out, you can see it on the photos, but you have to study it. Where his current location is, the use of this property is almost identical the way he parks his equipment and service vehicles, or it's almost identical to what he has now. He could literally pick it up and move it there. Uh, and as far as uh, a gentleman mentioned, uh, where are the neighbors? That's correct. Uh, the closest neighbor uh, is almost two football fields lengths away. As far as any neighbor, as far as disturbing anybody, as far as uh, interfering with what anybody does or anything like that. And I'll be, I, you know, I'd love to hear from neighbors. Uh, you know, when we were in there as Worms Way, I was the founder of Worms Way. We never, we had full endorsement of the homeowners association. Nobody ever, ever complained about anything. And uh, they, they were, you guys are great neighbors. Uh, yeah, sure. Do what you want. So, you know, that, that's really my piece. And I, I, I understand what we're applying for is a variance to have a general contractor, not a rural general contractor, but a general contractor in the ag zone. That's really what we're seeking. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Mr. Height. And uh, we appreciate your testifying before us. Do members of the board have questions for him? Uh, my only question was, is this uh, request uh, went before the commissioners to change it to light industrial? Was that the first time they have tried to change that zoning or use in the seven years since it's been on the market? Yes, correct. Thanks. Yes. Uh, can I speak to that also? Yes, sir. Uh, they basically, the logic was two reasons the closest light industrial property is four and a half miles away as the crow flies and the homeowners association is absolutely against it so rezoning to anything including general business is not going to happen uh, i realize in the upcoming zoning changes or designations that oliver wine would be called limited business they're now called uh pre-existing the gas station south of there will be called limited business. Uh, it, you know, the auto parts yard that's just south of there, I'm not sure what they would be called, but, uh, you know, there, there's absolutely zero chance, I believe, of going in front of the, uh, of getting the zoning change in that area. And I understand, I, I slightly understand the neighbor's concern of, gee, if it's light industrial, it could be turned into anything further down the road and so i understand that logic i i understand it but at the same time this is commercial property it needs to be used and the economics of it it's it's wishful thinking that somebody one of these businesses on this 83 83 businesses listed on this zoning chart table it's in seven years none of these businesses have made an offer i don't think it's realistic to think that one's coming anytime soon Anyway, thank you. Uh, 
get I hope to give John Arnold a chance to speak also. Who who would like to speak, sir? Uh, John Arnold. Uh, he's he's oh, he's right. wanting to purchase the property. Mr. Arnold, we have um, uh, roughly nine minutes left, and if you would please unmute your microphone and state your name. Yes, ma'am. I am John Arnold, and with my wife Sarah Arnold, we're the owners of Arnold Asphalt here in Bloomington, and we've been in business operating probably since sometime around 1997. We've been in business. Sir, could I get you to raise your right hand and thank you for your, your business service to our community? Oh, thank you. And raise your right hand and uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. And you have roughly nine minutes uh, okay. to continue to make the case for the. Okay. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I wrote a little, you know memento here and i want to address you guys and first of all thank you for listening to us tonight and martin thank you he's uh, very etiquette about the way he, he spelled all that out um we've been a husband wife team operating this business since around 1997 we started the venture together 24 years ago and we've been servicing our community their community needs by servicing residents and commercial projects all around the marketplace without wavering in our commitment to excellence. Our line extensions of business pertain solely to asphalt maintenance and installation out in the field, not production or manufacturing on the site. We want to be very explicit and be on the record that we do not manufacture asphalt or asphalt related materials or products and do not intend to expand our business at that location for any of those purposes. We do however seek a place that has the accommodations we need to run our current business. Our services takes us through Monroe County and surrounding counties abroad. Nothing we ever do is performed where we reside. At my current location, I have received a letter from the Monroe County Planning Department that infers because of our size and our growth, I must rezone to GB, light industrial, or heavy industrial, or relocate. We have come to learn it is nearly impossible to rezone here where I am because I am in an RE1 zone. After educating ourselves, we have done a lot of legwork and looked around before choosing a location where we would be close to family. My wife's family lives within a mile or two of that location in something that would suit our needs. That Worms Way building, it serves our needs. And we believe that that location, which has a complete covering from all sides and is discreet for our operations. As you are aware, the property is currently zoned AG, but does allow general contractors and has restrictions. Our sole purpose is to expand to this location because where we currently operate, our, it's an RE1 zone, and we become too small for our operations here. Um, if we're denied the variance to continue operations, we do stand a very real chance to be in serious financial hardship if the variance we seek fails. The BZA should be aware of potential fines being levied against Arnold Asphalt unless I expand my business outside of a non-conforming usage right, which was granted in 2010 which prevents me from having larger buildings and more space or more space to house and maintain my equipment for our work and to park vehicles and support our employees' incomes and tax-based support for our community. For us, expanding to a larger facility plat that allows businesses is my only viable option at this time. And the market does not lend itself to anything that I see as a proper fit for us other than the location that we seek a variance on. You know, I know tenure is a word that is an academic word used in professors and colleges, but I have to admit, I have many employees who I feel have tenure here because they're loyal, they have integrity, they have character and work ethic, and have been with us for many years. They depend on us, and they depend on this as much as we do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Thank you. Is there anyone on your team uh, who also would like to speak? Is your wife wishing to speak? Yeah, my wife is present. Sarah, do you want to say anything? Do you, 
I, I just want to say that. Um, sorry, I need to swear. If, could you state? Yeah. Sorry. And, and raise your right hand. State your name. Sarah it's Arnold. And do you raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Sorry for interrupting you. That's okay. Um, yeah, um, I'm Sarah Arnold. Uh, this, this property would be great for us um, to run our business from. Um, we have very loyal um, employees and it would just be, you know, great for us to and have a big opportunity to be running our business from here. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us tonight. I'm going to ask my colleagues if they have questions for you. Yeah. Mr. Loftman. Hello, Mr. Loftman. Greetings. Thank you. Yes. At the start, you said something that uh, if it's in these materials, I, I missed it. You have a current location, but you've been told that yeah. you cannot continue to operate there yes that's correct yes by county authorities yeah i've received um yellow and red letters um to bring you up to speed here i had put a, a carport up i did not request a permit i put it on it could be moved and they came in and i told them that and then they asked me how many employees i have and then from there we're here because you're, you, you, from a planning position, it was just the planning, who, what authority has said no? Is it the plan department? I guess um, Ann Criellis was, and um, Rachel uh, was two of the people that had contacted me and, and basically told me I had to ask for a conditional use permit. And when I did, um, then they went to asking me how many employees I have and things of that nature. And, and they sent me a letter saying that the conditional use permit was denied and that I would have to reseek zoning to general business, heavy industrial or light industrial or relocate. And so, you know, based upon uh, counsel that I had received, um, I was informed of how difficult the process is to go through uh, an RE1 zone to rezone to any of those uh, three possibilities. And we were looking for property at the same time, trying to be compliant. And it just so happens that we stumbled across Worms Way, previous Worms Way, and called the owner up and got the keys and went down there and walked the land and looked at it. And it just seemed like it was a, a perfect fit for what we, for our business, you know, because we're on a two acre plat here. And according in 2010, I had bought this property in 2008 in 2010, I went through the BZA and, um, Greg Zodi, who was the, uh, running the, you know, uh, he was the head of it. I guess he had granted me what they call non-conforming. Okay. So basically what people know as grandfather clause. And in that regard, they have restrictions. Like you can't increase your size. You can't, you know, if I, and when I build a carport, I didn't really think that I was violating any laws because I didn't put a floor in it. I didn't have plumbing. It was completely open and there's a fence on the back side, but apparently I was mistaken. And so, you know, to answer your question, that's why we're in this position and why we're seeking to, you know, to comply and, and also aid in, in help ourselves to grow in Martin's warm way. It seems like a perfect opportunity. All right. That's a complicated situation and I yeah. appreciate helping me get a perspective on it. You're welcome, Mr. Loftman. Yeah, I can also provide a little bit of context because that letter did come from our office. If you'd like us to provide any context. When, when, yeah, okay. I, I definitely so would like to. You, you want to do that now? Uh, because my confusion, my question is, if the county has said you can't operate where you are because of the number of your employees and so on and so forth, how does this property, which is not zoned any of those three things, the county said you have to be zoned to operate that kind of business with that kind of employees. How does this property solve any of your problems is what I'm kind of confused about. So uh, they, they are currently located on South Leonard Springs Road in a state residential one district, which is primarily a single family district. 
They um, added a 3,500 square foot carport onto the property. We received a complaint and we reviewed a prior determination by a prior uh, planning director, Greg Zodi, which said that the site was pre-existing non-conforming, but it did not allow for outdoor storage. Um, and it was to more likely comply with what would be called home-based business standards at that time. Slowly over the, the years, since 2010, more and more equipment had been placed outside. And with the addition of that structure, we're, we're not able to keep that pre-existing non-conforming determination once they do something to remove that determination, such as building without permits. So um, unfortunately we spoke with Mr. Arnold and told him that the options were limited in this area. You could rezone it to a zone that allows for a general contractor or look for another property. So they're looking for another property and this is where we are now. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Okay. Well, I see a good members of OD, oh, do you have a question? No. Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. Okay. And there are uh, several members of the public who are here. And if you are here to speak in favor of this petition, uh, please come up to the podium, raise your virtual hand on Zoom or press star nine. And if you're here to speak in opposition to this petition, uh, please make your way to the podium, sign in, and uh, thank you for being so patient tonight. Each member will have three minutes to speak, and the, the process is people will sign in, take your name, I'll swear you in, and then you have three minutes. So would you please state name your name? Is, uh, my name is Randy Barnes. I'm the Homeowners Association President for the Windsor Private Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Would you please raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. So you have three minutes. Three? Three, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you could refer to the photographs you have of the aerial photographs of the property, the one that was zoomed back a little bit. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, there are 40 homes in Windsor Private. 10 of those homes directly border on Wormsway property. My home is right toward the center top of that photograph. There's a pond and a, we think of it as a little wildlife refuge right next to it. And that corner right next to the pond is where Mr. Arnold would like to park all of his uh, coal tar trucks. I think that before anybody looks at an approval here, probably the first thing that should be done is to test the soil where he currently parks his trucks. Because I know what coal tar is. It's a pollutant. We've got three EPA cleanup sites in the state of Indiana because of coal tar. So we really don't want to see that in the neighborhood. The tree line that you're seeing there is not evergreen. It's the leaves fall off. So we'll be looking directly at those stored trucks when he parks it there. We really don't want to see that. Um, I feel for Mr. Arnold. I feel for Worms Way. They probably shouldn't be advertising the property as an industrial property because it doesn't have industrial zoning, but they do anyway. I really feel for them, but this, this isn't a good business for a non-industrial location. There are industrial properties in this county. Go find them. I don't understand. Really don't. Okay. Are you uh, finished or? Um, or do you I can keep going, but I think I'm probably close to three minutes. Well, you have about 54. It's on the screen. You can see the clock ticking down. Okay. We're worried about the odor. There has to be some odor. It's tar. Um, we're worried about visual aspects. We're worried about chemical contamination. This just isn't a good property to turn into a tar pit. Uh, 
Well, thank you very much. Actually, I'm going to ask it for some clarification. Yes. Might be a little unorthodox, but could you possibly step forward? And there's the same map on this screen as there is on that screen. Could you point to me where you said those 10 homes are that directly abut the property? Could, mm -hmm. you, could, could Yeah, right here in, on this screen right here, which is the same as everything else. Show me where those, that is your home. Okay. Okay. So, oh, okay. Okay. So your definition of directly abutting the property, those homes is three acres, is, is three acres distance. I, 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 I'm trying to understand. So you said they directly abut the property in, in, in your sworn testimony. I just want to be clear that those are roughly three, your home is roughly three acres away from the tree line. Is that correct? Is that, is that correct? Okay. Two. Okay. Okay. Two. Okay. We, we have to. Okay. Have I, I, I just needed clarification because, because the map was not showing what you defined as directly abutting. And I was guessing three acres, but it's only two acres. Okay. Thank you. No, I can, I can see we need him in the microphone because otherwise that's, that's all, that's all I need. Record. Okay. All so I, need. I think that you're, um, that's, we understand that, uh, there are 10 properties that are abutting. directly abut. Yeah. yeah dir directly up properties, look at, look at. properties yes. with the homes, two acres away. Okay. okay, one or two acres away, depending. Okay, so anyway, thank you very much, Mr. Barnes. Okay, okay. and there's, uh, we probably have uh, six or seven, three or four people online, and there are at least three more people here in person. So if the next person, sir, if you would come up to the microphone and uh, sign in. Yes. Yes. Property. Yeah. And would you please state your name? Yeah, my name is Brian Booz. Mr. Booz, would you raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Booz. You have three minutes. All right. Thank you uh, yes. for everybody's time. I'm a resident uh, in uh, Windsor Private. Um, as well as, as several of us are here tonight. Um, I wanted to kind of start with less than a year ago. Yes, we did go through a similar process with the rezone proposal to light industrial. Um, I was involved in the middle of that. So we went through many of the discussions with some of the same crew. Eventually that was uh, rejected. Uh, when I look at this uh, and what I just heard from the petitioner was uh, you know, they're being ousted by the county from their current location because of some pressure to rezone that particular property. They know that a past effort, recent one to rezone to light industrial in this area failed. Um, I see this activity, this variance request as kind of another avenue to get a similar result without actually going to the rezoning process for this, because I think they know that would fail as it did the last time. So we're going through this variance request, but the variance itself, the request is virtually identical to what a rezone the general business would be. I think this is just another path to that same result uh, is why it's being pursued in this manner. And I think all the same reasons that the last one failed, uh, the harmful uh, effects on the neighborhood, environmental, all that, which I think we're going to hear from several residents here in a minute. Um, those are still there. This is the same thing. It's just another path trying to get the same result, um, which, which failed for, for several reasons. We can look up that past case. When I look up in your own website, you know, what would be allowed under a general business, which like I say, this uh, variance request is virtually identical to that. The, the door is just wide open for things. If not this particular applicant being Arnold Asphalt, um, you know, a next one, a lessee, somebody else. If this is applied to the property, the door is wide open for many, many, many things. Um, so I think this, this request is, uh, you know, somewhat of a, I want to say, 
it, it's it's another way to get a rezone without going through the rezone process uh, is, is how I see it. Um, we heard earlier uh, from the current owner that uh, you know no offers in seven years and all that. That's a financial thing. That's not the property couldn't be used. If I value, if I price my own property that I own at two or three million dollars, it'll sit on the market for seven years. Uh, that's up to the owner of where's that line where I can drop it to sell the property. That's not a the property could not be used uh, for, as, as, as it's currently zoned. That's a decision on the part of the business. That's a business decision on the part of the owner of where is he trying to draw that line. You hold it up high enough, it may sit on the market forever. That's not a you know a zoning uh, hardship type thing. That's a business decision he has made on what price he's going to put on that property, and therefore it stayed on the market. Um, so. And, the other part, we just saw this picture. Uh, well, it's sort of, it's still up there. Um, included, we're talking about individual properties. May I interrupt you? Time has ended. Yes, sir. Ah, okay, thank I'm you. Sorry. Okay, thank you for your patience and waiting for your turn to speak okay. tonight. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, is there someone else present who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? And uh, on the television, you can see the countdown clock, three minutes, and I'm sorry um, that we have to do that. I know, and the gentleman who is appealing will have an opportunity to rebut as well, just to let you know our process. So- uh, You can lower the microphone as well. So could you please, uh, first of all, lower the microphone so we can hear you and state your name. Okay, my name's Irene Mixick. What is your last Irene name? Irene Mixick, M-I-K-S-I-K. Oh, Mixick. Okay, mm -hmm. so then check. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, and would you please raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. you have okay, I've, uh, my husband and I, Gary, have lived at, um, in Windsor Private for 28 years. So we have a lot of knowledge, historical knowledge of the property. Um, and one thing I think is very important to say is we live in a very pristine, it's very pristine, quiet. There's all kinds of wildlife there, everything you can imagine. And it's just a nature, it's like a nature preserve, actually. There are like 40, I think 40 homes there. Um, and we've seen things change, but generally speaking, the property, the area has been maintained its, its characteristic, its character. I'm concerned that um, Mr. Arnold's business will have a major impact on the characteristic of our, our neighborhood and possibly change the wildlife and um, the nature, the nature of our, our um, neighborhood. Um, one of the things that the owner mentioned was that their existing property when they were in business there, Worms Way, never impacted our neighborhood. And he's right. There was no noise. It was, a, it was a business. It was an agriculture business, meaning they sold organic products. Um, there was, it was a you know, eight to five business. So it didn't impact us at all. There was no, to my knowledge, no waste that impacted the environment, to my knowledge. Uh, again, it was an organic business. So I'm concerned, as um, Brian Booz mentioned, I think it was Brian, that the asphalt company that Mr. Mr. Um, Arnold is planning to park his equipment and building C, um, which is directly is adjacent to the pond, which, which was supposed to be a lake originally, which is a significant issue. The lake, so so-called lake, has has was leak was leaking. It actually leaked. It has karst under it, and we our property is on karst. Most of our our property, our, our neighbors, at least in our area, and my house is. <clears throat> across the road from, I'm trying to figure out where the property is. Well, it's okay, we, yeah. Yeah, yes. from, from um, Randy's place. We have karst, we have sinkholes in our, in our property. I think most of our neighbors do from, from our property going west, okay? So that property never held water. It, it holds a little bit, but it's, it's got a liner in it. And that's why it holds the, the little bit of water that it has. So I'm concerned about the environmental impact with any kind of seepage from the septic system or from the equipment, the asphalt equipment. 
And I do think that that at least needs to be um, evaluated before any further impact, any further decisions are made. Our property values in 28 years have doubled at least. And so I'm concerned also about the property value if a, a business like this goes in. So I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Well, thank you so okay. much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, Mrs. McChick. Okay, and uh, the next person, if you would kindly come up and sign in. And state your name. Warren Alban. Lauren. And what is your last name, sir? Aubin, A-U-B-I-N. Okay, thank you, Mr. Aubin. And would you uh, raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And you have three minutes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm a resident of Windsor Private. And uh, when we moved in there, we knew Warren Sway was there. And as I understand it, I hope the facts are correct. Before 1995, that was a horse farm, Right. So Mr. Height made a decision. He was the owner, and I believe my facts are correct. The owner, one of the owners of Worms Way, they made a conscious decision to have that rezone agriculture. So from 1995 to 2016, 21 years, I'm assuming he was collecting revenue from Worms Way. They made a decision to move the business from the current location, which Again, that's a business decision of Worm's Way. So I find it a little tough to understand how the financial hardship comes into play when he knew going into it that it was rural agriculture. Okay. So that's, that's one area that I'm having, struggling understanding why it would cause the, the board to make an exception or to rule in favor of this. Now, when you look at Jordan Industry, they got, it was approved and the Homeowner Association was against it. I personally stood up and said, I was in favor of Jordan's special variance because I visited the, by that location multiple times throughout the day for almost a month and a half, quiet as a mouse, you couldn't even tell they, they were there. I find it hard to believe that the same is going to be true with it just by the nature of their business. And Jordan industry was not going to have any trucks or any equipment parked outside of the building. It's all going to be uh, confined to the building that's the furthest south. So it's a completely different request. And, you know, as you go in, come into Bloomington or travel towards Oliver Winery, you're going to see that equipment. And, and I just think it's the wrong use of the property. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robin. And thank you for your patience and waiting tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Is there another person who would like to speak on this? Um, please come to the podium and sign in, sir. And maybe raise the microphone so that we can hear you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> she's sure she's my wife. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I'll sign in here. My name is Gary Mexick. I'm the treasurer of the Windsor Private Homeowners Association. Let me sign in here. Thank you, Mr. McChick. And would you raise your right? Do you swear to tell the I've truth? <laughs> the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, um, thank I, you. And you have three minutes, sir. Uh, first off, I... I need to say that we have no, nothing against Worms Way, nothing against nothing against RLS or we their companies, their businesses. Worms Way, as you heard before, was a very, very quiet, quiet company. But we have 35 residences in Windsor Private. And not a single one is in favor of any company moving in with trucks and noise and possible fumes and maybe even some, some environmental problems with what was supposed to be a lake. When this thing was originally developed in 1988, that was going to be a lake. And Jim and Kathy Slaker, who owned that property, spent $300,000 uh, 
three $100,000 liners to make that thing hold water. And the Army Corps of Engineers gave up and it never could because of the karsts. But it still sits there as a retention pond for just about all kinds of aquatic life you can see. And we are very concerned about anything that can, can leach into the ground because it's, it's very close. By the way, this area right here is actually common that lets up against the mm -hmm. region. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a speaking, common area. Speaking to the microphone. Yeah, that's a common area. Those those black things around the edge there, that's where you can walk. You can walk behind Windsor Private Area there. That's our property. And you can actually do uh, picnic benches out there and sit out there. And so that property, people are concerned about that being leached or encroached by any type of chemicals that might come out. So I've been a resident since 1994. And just drive out there sometime because it really is a hidden gem. It's beautiful. And, but again, we're not anti-business. We are not. We just have to protect what we see as being a problem. We've got I-69 right now, and uh, that's the white noise, and we deal with that. But we just, we just didn't want any other noisy business coming on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McChick. And uh, sir, if you, as you come up, um, Yes, please sign in and state your name. David Gent. Okay. Would you please raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Sir, I think the mic got turned off. Could you turn it on? The the button on the right. The Thank turns. you. Thanks, Gary. You turned it on. Thanks. <laughs> it's on now. So we live, have, we've lived in the neighborhood for um, about 22 years, and we are directly behind the pond, 7871 North Thames Drive. And at the back of our property, we have a little fire pit and a place to relax. Um, and on a good day, my kid can throw a rock and hit the property. So we're not... 600 feet away from the property as previously stated. Um, in the fall, the leaves come down. We can see the large building plainly. We can see the lights surround the building. We can see the back garage door. So if anything is parked in the back corner, this is what we're going to look at for four or five, six months of the year. Um, you know, other folks have stated worrying about what might come into the pond. Um, you know, I can take you down and show you four or five big holes out of the karst areas. When that pond fills up from the drainage, the water goes right down into um, the, the, the water table and, you know, something spills, that's what's going to happen. So uh, we completely oppose um, this request at this time. Thank you very much for coming tonight to speak to us. And the next person here, and we'll get to the people who have raised their hands virtually online in a few minutes after we're finished with the in-person component. Will. So would you please state your name? Uh, Julia Booz. And uh, would you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And you have three minutes. Okay. Um, I've been a um, resident in Winds Private for 23 years. Um, and our biggest concern, my biggest concern is once they get the uh, variance, that is so wide open. And I understand, um, you know, Mr. Hyde wanting to sell his property. I'm a realtor. I understand it. I tried to sell it twice. But uh, there are people that could move into that property. I mean, there, it, it's pretty wide open what is allowed. And I understand he's been trying to sell it for seven years. But again, price sells property, and we all know that. And if you keep the price at the same price, it's probably going to stay on the market. Um, and that's a decision that the owner makes. 
when they have a property that they want to sell. And, you know, you go in and I, I said, I, I, I personally tried to sell it twice with someone who could work into the variance that was allowed on that property. And so there's people out there that could move into it. One of them, it turns out the, the price was the issue on it. So they didn't purchase it. So, you know, I understand there's a hardship and he's maintained it and he has, and I agree with that. But being in the industry, if he wants to sell that property, he needs to make it marketable to the market that it allows. And he has not done that. So I think first, that needs to be taken into consideration. What is he selling that property for? He is listing it as industrial and it's not zoned for industrial. And it's, he's been doing that for years. And that even I, as a realtor, had to explain to buyers why they couldn't go and buy, purchase that property and put a manufacturing industrial um, jobs there because it's not zoned for that, but he's marketing it that way. So that isn't a concern to me as an industry, but if he wants to sell his property and keep it into the area that it's allowed, which is what he did when he purchased it, he should understand that he created that for himself. Now, he, it, when it doesn't benefit him, he wants to change it. And that doesn't go along with what we, our industry does. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming out tonight. So we have, to, uh, how many more people here in the room will be speaking? Oh. Okay, so we will go to the online uh, people. I understand that we, a member of our board has to leave uh, now, so, but we will continue because we still have a quorum. So uh, we will continue to hear the case. And I would like to recognize Mr. Andrew Long. And if uh, tech services could unmute him. And uh, sir, would you please uh, state your name and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Hi, I'm Andrew Long, and yes, I do. Okay, thank you. And you have three minutes. Okay, so I know this is a complicated issue, and I appreciate the owners and Mr Arnold's comments. However, as a Monroe County resident and taxpayer and voter, I feel like we're constantly fighting this rezoning and variance issue. Windsor Private is an executive neighbourhood, and there's probably 30 homes there that are over half a million dollar homes. And so it's, a, and it's also a peaceful and quiet neighbourhood. You know, it doesn't matter how big the lots are, if they're three acres, if I want to sit in my backyard, you know, I don't want to smell the, the asphalt trucks. You know, Windsor Private and HOA and the neighbourhood residents have opposed these variances in the past few years. Um, and Munro County officials um, have agreed with these and the commissioners also have agreed that uh, these should not be rezoned or variances issued. It needs to stay as rural agricultural, which it currently is. The current property owners and buyers have tried variances uh, before. Um, the current owners, I believe, are behaving dishonestly and they're constantly advertising their properties uh, as industrial zone, which is not correct. Uh, you can do a search on the internet and see that everywhere. Um, the owner states $800,000 in costs maintaining, but that hardship is not the fault of us. Okay, That was their decision to do that. And as far as Mr. Arnold goes, you know, I respect that, you know, it might be great for them and it might be closer for their family, but that's not a good reason. I mean, Arnold's an asphalt company and there are, and and it's, it's not a good fit for this neighbourhood. I mean, have you seen the photos of their current yard? I mean, it looks like a mess and we don't want to have smelly and loud equipment. I mean, have you ever driven behind an asphalt truck and smelled the smell? It's awful. And it's going to fill our whole neighbourhood with fumes and to toxic fumes and smell as well as contaminating the groundwater. You know, we have that retention pond, which animals drink from. Um, the, you know, they're going to have trucks disturbing our peace and quiet. Um, they're going to have lights on in their parking lot. Um, 
So, you know, Wayport Road area is fairly quiet. There are farmers and cyclists and families using it. Um, having asphalt trucks speeding along there will destroy this rural area. And it will also pose a safety risk for the residents. Um, there are many other properties in Monroe County that Arnold could purchase that is already zoned industrial or suitable for their type of, of role. Um, I understand that Guy Lofman made some comments earlier tonight on another matter, and he mentioned about he wants to protect the residents. Um, you know, this is a prime example of this. This is a residential, agricultural and rural area, not industrial. And rezoning and spot zoning and variances um, are just not just not appropriate for this. And you know, if that was to happen, that would cause economic and unnecessary hardship for the Windsor private residents. So I'm requesting that the planning department follow previous commissioner's decisions and that you please deny this rezone request or this variance request. Um, and, and any future rezone or variance requests, which seem to just come up constantly, um, there needs to be a stop to this at some point. So um, thank you, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Long. And I'm going to now recognize Vanessa Odin Senek. And uh, if tech services could unmute her. And if you could state your name, raise your right hand. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Ms. Odin Senek, um, I think you have to press an unmute button on your screen. Vanessa, we're unable to hear you, but we can leave information in the chat about how to uh, call in if you're having audio issues on your computer. Oh, she can speak now. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I apologize. Um, I'm 7831 North Thames Drive, and yes, I do um, swear to Thank what you said. You so much. Thank you. And you have three minutes. Okay. I have five children. And we love our neighborhood. We back up right to the neighborhood that is going to be um, Arnold Asphalt, or hopefully not. I almost cried when I heard Mr. Arnold and his wife speak because my husband and I both own businesses. And so I definitely feel for them having to remove their businesses from where they currently are and move on to another space. However, I do not want my children to have to have any kind of environmental issues because of their business. What, you're, what you guys zoned this business for was not what they're asking for. And, and we bought our home being so excited about having a space that is so safe for our children. So as a mother, I just, it's very hard for me to accept what's happening or what's, what's being opposed or, so anyway, my husband is not here tonight, so I do apologize, but we hope that, that you guys um, deny this request. Well, thank you for making your um, opinions known to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and we appreciate your testimony. And I, I'm going to turn now to Mr. Schnatzmeyer, and he's calling in by telephone. And I believe in order to unmute, you have to press star six. So on your telephone. And uh, if, can you hear me? Yes. And yes. please state your name. And do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. <clears throat> yes. My name is Todd Schnatzmeyer, and I do so swear. Thank you. And you have three minutes, sir. Okay. Um, I think Andrew captured uh, our sentiments very well, actually. Um, you know, we've been here uh, going on 13 years now. Um, we are in direct wind line of the pond and everything that goes on to the west. So whenever we do get a whiff of something that's a little out of the ordinary, it carries right to our home. Um, we, we do enjoy the, the quiet of this neighborhood up until the development of I-69, which has noticeably increased our sound uh, uh, noise uh, pollution considerably. And I think everybody in the room would agree to that. Um, this is just another uh, straw on the camel's back, if you will, if this gets through. Um, <clears throat> we have been good neighbors to everyone, including uh, Oliver Winery and Wormsway. And uh, I think uh, all we're asking for is a fair turn in that regard from our neighbors. Um, 
to to uh, say that there's hardship because the property hasn't sold. I think Julie captured that very well. It's maybe not uh, going out to the right audience for marketing. Uh, certainly, marketing it as light industrial and industrial is really uh, a, a bit off character, I think, uh, of how that pro property should be marketed. I don't think that's fair to uh, potential buyers, number one. Uh, I do respect that the Arnolds have a business to run. I do feel for them and, and their situation. This is nothing against the Arnolds or the business or anything. Uh, this is simply uh, a, a community that has been here long established uh, before these uh, rezoning and variance attempts have been, attempt, have been made over the last few years. And uh, quite frankly, as Andrew pointed out, the, the land should be sold under the use. It should not be given <clears throat> any kind of a rezoning, especially. Uh, and if there is a, 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 a land use variance, that travels with the company. That, that's not a, a uh, passing the baton from one owner to the other or sublease. That should never be allowed. Um, the, the whole thing with uh, Jordan Industries, I'm, excuse my voice. The whole thing with Jordan Industries, uh, that was based on that business. And it seemed like uh, post that appeal, uh, that, that uh, uh, permission uh, was referenced several times. Uh, again, that was a situation dealing with that specific company their owners, their mode of operation. And it was not meant to be universally adapted to anybody that came in after them. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Schnatzmeyer. Um, I'm going to turn now and recognize Mr. Michael Hostetler. And if you would please uh, unmute yourself and uh, do state your name and raise your right hand. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, I do, uh, Michael Hostetler. And you have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Michael Hostetler, I'm a resident of the Windsor Private Homeowners Association, and we oppose uh, this change that's been requested. A uh, couple of points I'd like to make, and I agree with everything my, my neighbors have said, uh, much, much better than I ever could say, uh, with every point that they made. I think it's important also to understand what kind of business we're talking about here. Uh, and again, I have nothing personally against Arnold Asphalt. Uh, in a prior life, I was a corporate executive of one of the nation's largest asphalt contractors, uh, well-established throughout Indiana. Uh, I was general counsel and vice president there. Uh, in Indiana alone, we have 17 sites, or we had 17 sites for uh, that we had yards and maintenance. And I can assure you that at no time would I ever wanted to live next to any of those sites uh, that we had our maintenance equipment stored on. Uh, asphalt is a very dirty business. Uh, it is it, highly toxic and still in, in Indiana, especially I will say, because Indiana's laws will still allow coal tar and neighbors brought it up earlier to be used a, as a sealant. Uh, that stuff is one of the nastiest products you can ever find. It is absolutely toxic to any wildlife, especially amphibian life. Uh, it, it gets into the water system. It is, it is, there's a direct lineage between that product and cancer in children. It is nasty. It, and, and how it would be transmitted into our neighborhood, even though he's not going to be manufacturing asphalt on the site, he will be storing the materials in there. He's going to be restoring his paving equipment, his trucks. All those trucks will have the asphalt on it. And to maintain equipment, I can assure you, you have to maintain it by cleaning it. He's going to wash it all down. Where's all that going to go? It's going to go off the property into our retainage pond, or worse, into one of the karst holes. And then it's into everybody's drinking water. Water. This stuff is extremely nasty. The the other aspect about it is is the maintenance itself. I mean, you're you're talking about loud, noisy firing up of equipment early in the morning. Uh, security lights that you know, seventy five foot towers for security lights with light extruding everywhere. I can assure you, we would never at my former employer, we would never have even suggested we put our plants in anywhere but industrial sites. And if you look around Bloomington, look at EB Paving, Milestone Contractors, Rogers Paving, all the, all their operations are in industrial areas. There's a reason for that. 
It is nasty, and it does not belong in our agriculturally rural, uh, zoned area. If you're not going to maintain a rural reserve area, then get rid of it. You know, that's, but you have that zoning, and we're in that zoning, and the reason we bought here in this area was because it's zoned rural reserve and agriculture. We don't want this here. There's other places. I looked online today. There's 17 industrial spots available for uh, Arnold to move to. It, the fact that it's near their, their family, that's nice for them, but not good for us. And I just, from an industry person, I, this is a really bad decision. Thank you very much, Mr. Hostetler. Uh, I don't know who owner is. Is that our people? No? Okay, so there's a person who's identified as having raised their hand whose name is owner on our screen. So if tech services could unmute that person and um, if you could state your name and... Uh, and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth while raising your right hand. So, owner, Hello. <laughs> what is your name? Hi, my name is Tammy Druckmiller. I am raising my right hand. Okay, and thank you. What Could you say your last name again? Druckmiller. Druckmiller. Okay, yes. thank you. And you have three minutes. Yes. Um, our property, my husband and I, our property is adjacent to the back of Worms Way. We are 7851 North Thames Drive. So um, it's not two football fields length um, where it would be. We are right here on the corner, a little above the corner by the pond. We're the last house there on the pond. Um, I guess my main concern is I am a realtor in the community. And I, too, have brought him, uh, brought the owner, um, a church that would have liked to have rented. And he did express to me that he was not in the business to rent. And I understand that. I appreciate that. So the hardship um, of trying to help him financially with a rental, I felt like was better than nothing. Um, I also agree with all my neighbors. They have been great to state everything that we all feel as well. Um, we are close. We do not um, want to smell the asphalt. We do not want the agricultural um, water. What happens if there's a fire? I mean, there's just so many questions and it is not zoned for this business. And as I believe the last person who spoke said, there are plenty of other places that are zoned for this business. Well, thank you so much for your testimony tonight, Ms. Drip Miller. And um, if it's okay, we'll move on now to Lisa Kinder, whose yes. hand is raised. And if you would state your name, raise your right hand, and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Hi, my name is Lisa Kinder. And um, yes, I'm telling the truth. Thank you very much. And uh, you have three minutes. Okay. Um, I very much appreciate the comments of my neighbors, and I agree with all the points that everyone made. I want to point out that this is largely an industrial area or a residential area. And if you look at, you know, with the introduction of I-69, we have these access roads out here now that it's highly utilized by people who are walking, biking. And this is the gateway into Bloomington. And Oliver Winery is such a well-known area throughout the, the region here, not just Indiana, that when my husband would have clients out of state, people would say, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to Bloomington to go to Oliver Winery. And it, you know, we have this nice residential area that uh, supports the winery property. We have, uh, when Worms Way was here, it, it also kind of conformed to the neighborhood. Uh, the horse farm just south of the current Worms Way property you know, the dark horse in there is, of course, the salvage yard, but that's that's grandfather, I'm sure. But I think that the planning commission really needs to think, you know, you're, you're looking at the entry to Bloomington, Indiana, not just, not just what goes on in our neighborhood, but 
this is the entrance to our entire community and and you, I, don't, I think an, a property that's put out here should not be like an eyesore to the area. So I hope you all will consider that in your decision. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kinder. Thank you. And we have uh, Steve uh, Brown who has his hand raised. And uh, if you would kindly state your name and do you raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I have my right hand raised. My name is Steve Brown. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Okay, and you have three minutes, Mr. Brown. Thank you very much for allowing us to speak tonight. I'm uh, a resident at 7921 North Thames, which is the house that would be backing up to the north of this property, to the pond. I have concerns about the, the health and safety of having this kind of an asphalt business near us. I have a concern that anything might slip into the pond. That's a retention pond that would uh, damage the wildlife that lives around it and lives in it. Uh, I believe that this, if it was approved, would cause our values of our home to decrease maybe significantly. Um, it's my understanding, now I'm not too clear on the zoning codes, but what I found is that my zone is a one family dwelling on a plotted lot. To the north of this potential business is one family plotted lot. To the east of this business is a one family plotted lot. And to the south of this business is a one family plotted lot. I would not think it would be wise to cause a, a, to put a business zoning right in the middle of a residential area. Uh, so I would be in, opposed completely to this type of rezoning. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Brown. And uh, we appreciate everyone's patience. And M Mr. Arnold uh, will have a five minute opportunity to rebut the statements of the neighbors. And I see that Mr. Arnold has his hand raised. So if, once he's unmuted, uh, sir, you will have five minutes. I uh, appreciate the uh, homeowners in uh, Windsor there expressing their, you know, their feelings. Um, I want to address, I've been writing some of this down in, you know, if it, if it eases anybody's mind at all, I want to start out with the coal tar problem. Um, as you are, you may not be aware of this, but we can no longer really get coal tar. The industry standard has been set and it's all environmentally friendly. And th that's the bottom line. None of us could get coal tar this year. It was almost impossible. And so the market's changing. And especially with the comment about washing down your trucks and things of that nature, the gentleman that's familiar with the asphalt industry, he is correct that there is sediments that, you know, get in the trucks and stuff of that nature. That is right. But when we, when we line our beds with asphalt, we use an environmentally uh, clean product. So the asphalt don't stick. They're getting away from diesel and things of that nature. Um, as for the smell, uh, we don't produce or manufacture asphalt. Um, you know, we go from a job site at seven o'clock in the morning or eight, and then we're gone all day. When we come back at five, we park the trucks, we punch out. And then if it, if it comes to maintenance and things of that nature, those are done inside the, the facility. They're not done outside. We don't, you know, we have no intention of washing trucks outside and things of that nature. Um, let's see here. Um, you know, as for testing my soils over here, I bought this plat back in 2008 from a company that had previously run an asphalt company. So, you know, and I've been married for 28 years and this woman is on my butt. I can't even walk across my carpet without taking off my shoes. So, you know, I don't think you would have a problem um, in consideration in that just for the simple fact that when there was an aerial picture taken, we have been trying to clean up our property in the sense of making stuff park it or underneath the canopy or lean to. Um, and that's what got us in this. So anyway, you know, as for the coal tar, there is none of that. Um, 
that's going on, you know, in as for the chemicals that when you wash down your trucks, things of that nature, everything's moved towards the environmentally friendly, uh, uh, solvents. Um, you know, we don't have any intentions of firing up and making noises and big spotlights out there. If we go to work, we go out at eight o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. We don't come back until the evening. You know, from my understanding, when Wormsley was there, there was, you know, 60 or 70 sem semis a day going in and out of there. You know, it, it was selling products in the marketplace. Um, I thought that us uh, actually coming in there to offer an opportunity to buy that property was actually an olive branch to the homeowners association in the sense that progress is, is progress, but we have no intention of, you know, parking trucks up in the front so everybody can see us. As a matter of fact, I, I kind of like the idea that it's all canopied in the back and hidden. And, you know, we wouldn't, you know, I told my wife, I don't even want to put a sign on the building. I have no intention of, of making a big ruckus or anything of that nature down there, but I do appreciate everybody's opinion and we respect people's opinions, you know, and I thank you for all for bringing that to my attention, but I think I've addressed the, uh, the chemical side of things. And if that's a major concern on your part, all I can say is that, you know, we would do our best to make sure that we stay in compliance with those things for sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Arnold. And we, uh, I just want to make a note that uh, Mr. Daly left, and I believe that D. Owens has left as well. And so we have a quorum with the three of us, but our vote has to be unanimous, right, in order for us to come to the decision tonight. And, uh, and with that being said, um, I will because we have two new members of the Board of Zoning Appeals, and even though I'm the only one who's not a lawyer, I would like to give a little instruction that um, Mr. Myers put in the packet, that in order for us to approve this, uh, these variances tonight, we have to find um, uh, you know, rationale to support at least five conditions that the, the uh, petitioner has met. In other words, he will have had to have proven that the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, and welfare of the community, and that he would have to have proven that the use and value of the area adjacent to the property included in the variance will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. He would have had to have proven that the need for the variance arises from some condition peculiar to the property involved, and that also the strict application of the terms of zoning ordinance will constitute an unnecessary hardship if applied to the property for which the variance is sought. And also that the approval does not interfere substantially with the comprehensive plan. And just because um, I'm the senior states person on this <laughs> panel, I would just like to say that, um, first of all, Mr. Arnold, uh, you are a good employer and you fill an important community need here. And uh, we appreciate you and we value you as a community member. Um, but these standards are here because this is the purpose of zoning. Uh, the zoning is uh, so that people can make investments in their own personal property without heightened risk. And um, I, uh, without saying much more, I've just it, you know, stated those uh, principles. I would like to open it up to the, the, my colleagues on the board to see how they're feeling about these principles and uh, whether or not you think that the standard has been met that all five of these conditions can be, it's a strict standard. And I'm so sorry that it's a strict standard, but it's there to protect property owners. So I'd like to just see where my, um, my colleagues are falling. I, I find that I'm sympathetic, but uh, the, the, it sounds like the property has been Guy, can you make sure your mic is on? It sounds like the property has been highly uh, uh, valued, and that's great. But we've had a real realtors testify that that it's overpriced for the purposes that are available. That it's advertised as industrial, which 
we know it's not. That's what we're that's what we're here for. Uh, I, I certainly we have ample evidence from my perspective that it will be injurious, injurious to the uh, uh, community and to the value of the adjacent houses. Uh, the, the peculiar condition was created by the owner because he's, he's built uh, uh, property that Cry, might cry out for not, for non-agricultural uses, but he built it for limited agricultural uses. So uh, I don't think that the conditions for approval of the var use variants have been met, and uh, it's my expectation that I will uh, vote against granting it. But I would like to see or hear what uh, Ms. Davidson has to say. Well, I agree. Looking at these five criteria, and I have them right here in front of me as well. It is a very high standard. And I really, I haven't seen anything to believe the standard has been met. And in fact, it seems quite likely to me that uh, this couldn't be rezoned for light industrial for this kind of property in any way whatsoever. And that is what that business would be operating as, not as the agricultural zoning that it clearly is right now. So I feel the same uh, as Mr. Lofman and as uh, Ms. Clements that I am very sympathetic to that uh, owner of the property, trying to figure out what it's going to be used for. The access has been changed because of the interstate, um, rimmed by very passionate homeowners who love their slice of heaven. There's no doubt about that. So um, I, I will say, just like Mr. Lofman, I'm inclined to deny this because these are extraordinary five circumstances and I cannot possibly see how they are met in this factual situation. Yes, and I would like to add, um, I know how difficult this is and we're here to make the difficult decisions. Um, but, and be, we do value you as a business member and as a community member. And so, um, you know, and we know that, this, that you have appealed to us for some remedy because this for you was an opportunity to further uh, your ethical and longstanding business and service to our community. That being said, these other competing uh, interests of, you know, so many neighbors who've come out, I would say it's close to 100%, you know, that that matters to us. And that, um, especially, you know, this, well, there's, in each of these conditions, um, I don't believe that the standard has been met except possibly for item C, the need for the variance arises from some condition peculiar to the property involved. In other words, it's vacant and it's been vacant, but um, that should not result in the um, injury, so to speak, to the neighboring properties. Not, I, you know, I can't stipulate whether or not it would be chemically or environmentally harmful, but they feel that it's harmful to their welfare and their well-being and to the value of their properties at least. And, uh, and also this is a gateway to the city and the comprehensive plan and the um, planning purposes have kind of really focused uh, designations for um, making uh, the entryway into our community, um, you know, welcoming. And there are, I believe, other locations where this could happen. So I plan to vote no, and I'm sorry to say that for Mr. Arnold, you know. Well, and, and for the owner. And for the I owner, mean, there, yes. There's, there's, and Mr. Height, yes. Yes, there's, there's, there's certainly hardship for Mr. Height, and I, I sympathize with, with, with him, but... Under the circumstances, I am going to move to deny variance 2234 and variance 2236, Arnold General Contractor Use Variances for Lots A and B 
at uh, on uh, on the properties at uh, 7850 and 7854 North Wayport Road. I will second that. It's been moved and seconded to deny the use variance request under VAR-22-34 and VAR-22-36, which is the general contractor use variance for lots A and B at 7850 North Wayport Road. A, a vote in favor is a vote to deny the use variance, and I will do these together if that's okay. Yes. Uh, Pamela Davidson. Yes. Margaret Clements. Yes. Guy Laughlin. Yes. Okay, so both use variances have been denied by a vote of three to zero. And so thank you so much for all of your patience and also for your good thoughts in further serving our community. I'd like to thank the public for coming out and for your patience with our process, but thank you for, uh, for, for making yourselves heard. So have a good evening. We have two more cases tonight. And uh, the next case involves VAR-22-37A and B. One is a variance for a buildable area 15 slope. For a buildable area 15 slope. The other is for environmental constraints overlay for area three. And, um, and this concerns the property at 8144 East State Road 45, the, and the petitioner is the Monroe County Community School Corporation. And I believe um, it's, oh, Mr. Brown, great. We can hear from you on this kind of, it looks interesting. Thank you. Uh, this variance request has been filed due to the proposed construction of an amphitheater on the school property. Said amphitheater was proposed in this location, presumably to take advantage of the slope within the area. Uh, however, as the proposed constru construction area is in an area with slope greater than 15% and is in the environmental constraints three overlay, these two variances were triggered. During examination, it was found that the property did contain another potential buildable area was slope less than 15%, just east of the track field marked by the white circle on this map. However, building the amphitheater in this location would likely require significant grading, possibly also a redesign. It has also been that the area suggested is used already as part of school activities, such as physical education class. And setbacks could also be a potential issue at, if at this location. Here is sort of a proposed digital image of the amphitheater in question. It will be located just south of the parking lot marked by the black circle on this map here. And this is sort of, and this is what the map would look like in regards to the elevation, as well as a clearer picture on the right showing uh, what changes might need to be made, what trees might need to be cleared in order to make it fit. As you can tell, the overlay is not entirely accurate, but it is sufficient for giving a general idea. Here's also photos showing the site itself. It is located next to what looks like a trail. The trail was not ventured into during the site visit. And here is a picture of the alternative site just by the fence back there. Uh, again, this site is used by the school, presumably during physical education class, and setbacks, again, might be an issue. Due to this, staff recommends approval of both variances as the proposed location is suited for a amphitheater, because again, amphitheaters work well with sloped areas. That's nice. They're taking advantage of the slope. That's good. So is the petitioner or the petitioner's representative here? Great. Come to the podium and tell us. We're sorry that you had to wait so long, but thank you for your patience. Yes, and uh, it's just the burden of being a public servant, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if you would sign in and then state your name and uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. My name is Bill Riggert. Okay. And I'm with Fletcher Riggert, Cooper James. Oh, great. It's good with, to meet you. Pleasure yeah. as well. Yeah. And with me tonight is Dr. Mobley. Oh, and great. she's the assistant superintendent, but also the acting principal for Unionville School. 
Oh, thank you for staying up. I'm so sorry for this is hard for especially for teachers and principals. But please, you have 15 minutes to describe the project to us. And yes. So what we're doing is an outdoor learning facility that's in in a form of an amphitheater. Essentially, it sits in that hole. It's the perfect topography for this feature and le outdoor learning area. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're bringing it forward and would request your um, <laughs> approval of our variance seeking the variances that we have. And the slopes are just, unfortunately, they're too steep for, the, for our zoning ordinance, but they're perfect to put in um, terrace seating. And it's just the perfect set. It, it looks great. Do you have questions for Mr. I do not. Yeah, it seems like uh, the topography fits the use, the purpose to perfection. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the design is really beautiful, too. And we love to think of our children uh, being inspired by the design and then to have that gorgeous view of what makes Indiana so lovable. You know, it right. just looks fantastic to me. Um, and I just, you know, I'm, that's very exciting to us. Sure. And yeah. Dr. Moley may, yes. may have some things to add about oh, great. Ed outdoor education programs. Oh, places. exciting. Great. So please sign in and uh, state your name and raise your right hand when you're done. Do you swear good evening. I'm good. Andrea Mobley, and I'm the principal at Unionville Elementary. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but I do. <laughs> goes I with do. the job, so, right? <laughs> good evening, and um, thank you for having me here this evening. And I just want to tell you, I'm so excited about this outdoor learning pavilion and the opportunities it's going to give our students and give the community. I don't know if you know this, but Unionville has a focus on the Earth curriculum and where E stands for the environment and A for arts and T for technology and H for health. Um, so, oh, I forgot A for art. Um, uh, and so um, this will give so many opportunities for our students to have outdoor learning activities and performances and programs. And it's just going to be serve so many students for so many years in the community. It's just going to be what an asset it will be to the community. So thank you so much. Oh, we thank so you. appreciate this opportunity. And thank you for your patience tonight. We do have the, we will open it up to the public to see if there's anyone still here, <laughs> the diehards <laughs> who would like to speak in favor of this petition. Is there anyone online? If you would raise your right hand or raise your virtual hand or press star nine. If you're there to speak against it, please make yourselves known. And so there's no one, so back to us. So is there further discussion with us or a motion? Um, I just want to say I've been privileged to come out to Unionville and bring a Lotus Blossom artist. And oh. it was such a great experience uh, from stem to stern. So kudos to what you're doing at that school. Yeah, that's that great. That's really exciting. And the design is exciting. And we appreciate also the work of your firm, sir. You know, it's really a beautiful design. So uh, thank you for improving our community. Yeah, I think we're ready to uh, make a motion. I move that we approve variances 22-37A and 22-37B uh, for Unionville Elementary, the buildable area slope variance, and also the environmental constraints overlays as well. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve VARDS 22-37A and 37B, that's the 15% and eco area three variances. Um, a motion in favor is a motion to approve. Guy Laughman. Yes. Pamela Davidson. Oh, yes. And Margaret Clemens. Yes. Okay, the motion is approved. And Three thank you zero. again for waiting so long. <laughs> thank you. And we have one more case before the evening ends. And I believe Mr. John Lox has uh, made it back. And, oh, yes. And, and it would sure be nice to help uh, him further his project. 
So um, Anne um, had spoken to Mr. Lux through email, and I don't believe that we were able to get the estimates as of today. So um, the choice is whether you want to hear from Mr. Lux again, or if you want to um, continue this petition to the, it would be, let me look at the date, it would actually be October 5th is the next BZA meeting because September, right. this was the September right. rescheduled hearing. Right. So I can we, pull up the, the site plan again. We will have to be unanimous on this in order for it because he is gone and Mr. Daly is gone. Well, I know uh, Mr. Lachman was very anxious to have that documentation. So I'm going to defer to you on that because you were... I understand we can't approve it subject, can we, to uh, the electrical line placement and the estimates. We really can't do that, can we? You explained that before to us. I, I think it would be difficult because you'd yes. be um, putting the cart in front of the horse, if you will, because yeah. you would be making a decision based on information you yet you have yet to receive if that's your basis. Now, if, if that's not important, if you find other reasons why the, the property is constrained or you can see or hear from Mr. Lux on how it's constrained and you can make a decision based on that, um, then you can vote. But um, as far as gaining evidence after the vote is heard, there's it, it puts us in a little bit of a difficult position. I move to continue this matter to our next meeting uh, and hope that we can get sufficient documentation for me to feel comfortable supporting the, 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 the request. Is there a second? Well, I'm going to support my colleague. Yes. And so, yes. So please call the roll. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded to continue this petition to the October 5th Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. So let me double check that meeting date. Should we hear? Yes. Please? October 5th. Um, it's been moved and seconded to continue it. I just have a point of order, and I just wondered if Mr. Lofman wanted to hear from Mr. Lox since he's still online. Oh, well, my understanding is that we can't get the, the, the information that I'm hoping for, but I'm glad to listen to him. And I think we should. Sure, he's waiting. absolutely. He's been... He's been out, outrageously patient, and if he wants yes. to, to still he here, I, I, yes, he can <laughs> convince me. That's yeah. why. Well, I, I went through a rate. Oh, can you guys hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Like I said, this is new to me. Um, I appreciate what you guys I, – I, I, it was a little tough to watch, but I learned a lot, and I appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, the short version is, is that this isn't a hardship for me, so I, I preferred – to not have to wait another month, but, um, and I did, put I put a text message in there that just, I, I talked to my wife and she did confirm the cost and the power line cuts the current driveway in half from between the, uh, the proposed location and our current driveway. Um, having said that, thank you very much. I think the easiest way forward is what you just said, said is, that I'll go get the RMC uh, estimate. I'll produce it. I'll, I don't know what other things you'll need, but there could be other things you want. So I think it's probably best to put this off to October 5th and proceed with the process to make it run smoothly. And so. let me say, Mr. Lux, I've, uh, I may be wrong, but I, that they, should, they, they have maps of your property showing where their easement is, but I would expect they might and and to see the map and to see your your property lines and the estimate altogether would would uh, make me feel comfortable that I had done what is sure, sure 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 yeah. I'll I'll talk to whatever on the easement thing um, I can send email I don't he just said that to 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 do the ditch, I, we would need to, to run the new power line. They needed an easement. I, I don't know if they, there's no existing easement like that. I don't think there's any lines other than they could just say, this is where we think we would put the power, new power line. If that's what you're asking for, I can ask if they could do that. Well, right. There's would be an existing easement. 
that they yeah. then there there would be a proposed relocation and you would almost certainly have to give an easement unless it's within the easement you'd have to give a new easement for that which they would gladly prepare and uh, you know where yep. your neighbor fits into all this but hopefully you can get it straightened out here yep uh, yep yep thank you very much um and uh i'm not trying to to to, to butter you guys up for the approval in october 5th but i did i did actually enjoy watching this um it, i'm glad i i learned a lot tonight thank you well i just want to appreciate your uh, willingness to work with us on that that's you're you're being so cooperative and we appreciate that too thank you yes thank you mr loss you were really splendid i we really appreciate your respect to the way you treated our staff and the way you treated us we really appreciate that all right see you guys october 5th or some of you I'm going to call the roll real quick on the continuation yes. just to formally uh, have the vote. Yes. So uh, Pamela Davidson. Yes. Mark Clemens. Yes. Guy Laughman. Yes. Okay. So we will see uh, Mr. Laux on October 5th. Okay. We look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank staff. You really did a great job tonight. Thank you so much. You guys did a great job. And all of, all of us. We're here. We're here. <laughs> My silly question is, how do you randomize the order in which you're going to call us? Oh, Never mind. Are. Never mind. But our votes <laughs> is always different. <laughs> Yeah. But because we can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, think that. Yeah, the principal. Yeah, we can try and do that. Typically, we order it just in the time, in the basis of when they file, so that it's like first come, first serve. But I understand that point. Yes, yes. All right, thank you. And I don't have any reports. Do you have any reports? No reports okay. from legal or planning. Thank any, you. Any of check? Well, just do set the bank. Yes. yes. Well, thank you all for sticking with it and getting thank through you. this long agenda. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank Thank you, you. getting right. through it. And uh, any objections to adjourning? <laughs> <laughs>